from Carson Park here in downtown Eau Claire, Wisconsin. We welcome you in to the Regis Ramblers Sports Network here on both Facebook and YouTube as we get set for a big clash in the Clover Belt. It's the Nielsville Granton Warriors at 5-2 and two overall and 4-1 and one in conference, taking on the Regis Ramblers here at 5-2 and two and 4-1 and one in conference as well. Oh, everybody, Pete Knutson with you. Should be a great one here tonight. we got lots to talk about. Of course, a four-way tie atop the Clover Belt coming into this week's play. The winner of this game has a pretty good shot of having having at least a share of the championship in the Clover Belt by the end of this season, which is two more weeks left of the season. Going to be a great one, certainly, but let's uh, get it over to Brian Brenner, the head coach of the Eau Claire Regis Ramblers, to talk a little bit about tonight's game. adversity it was uh, back and forth you had uh, guys get and back in for more pregame coverage as we get set for the Ramblers taking on Nielsville Granton and head coach Brian Brenner joins us coach appreciate you taking some time with us and uh, let's talk about last week a heck of a game against uh, Stanley Boyd your team really hung in there it was adversity it was uh, back and forth you had uh, guys getting banged up all over the place that was uh, I don't want to say it's a defining win but it's certainly a big win for your program this season isn't it yeah I would say the biggest so far um we were able to beat a real quality team and uh, do it through some adversity, like you had mentioned, some injuries, um, and back and forth, being down early. Uh, right? it, truly a defining moment, I think, for our season. Now, whether you win or whether you lose, you got to respond and you got to come back the next week ready to work and ready to get better. Um, you can't rest on your laurels. Um, otherwise, the game of football will smack you right in the face. It feels like that's the case in the Clover Belt this year is, you know, you, you have a big game, you think it's the biggest of the year, then next week it's, an, it's a bigger game, right? And that's kind of what it feels like this week. Uh, another chance for your program to get one step closer to a potential Clover Belt championship. Do you talk about that or is it just one game at a time? You know that the end of the season's coming, but this is, this is just one, two, one game, you got to go for it. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't think it needs to be said, you know, how big a game it is. Um, I think your biggest game is always the next one, and that truly this year has been that way. You know, the last couple of years we've had so many lopsided games. This year has been unique in the fact that we've had a lot of close games, and tonight's going to be another one of those. Um, it seems like our conference is really uh, jumbled uh, in terms of the proximity of uh, a lot of teams. I think there's four or five teams that could beat anybody on every night, any given night, and the, and the season has kind of played out that way to some extent. Do you think that helps you. I know this is probably getting a little ahead of ourselves, but you are in the playoffs. Obviously, you know you've already qualified for it. Does it help you come playoff time to have played so many close, tight games You know that you know that the guys have that experience once that uh, eventually rolls around? And who knows, maybe even tonight could help you out too. Yeah, we've been in plenty of close games. Um, let's hope it does uh, pay off here come, come playoff time, uh, but for now we're just trying to continue to get better and uh, try to put our best effort forward. Let's talk a little bit about uh, Nielsville tonight. Obviously, they've got a heck of a quarterback in Bryce Erickson. You called him probably the best quarterback in all the conference this uh, uh, season. He's been really solid. They can throw it around. I'm sure he's the, the first guy you look at, and, of course, a couple of receivers, too, that you have to shut down tonight. Yep, uh, without a doubt. I mean, we knew last year when we played them here, the end of the year, the last game of the regular season, we knew they were going to be good because I think everybody who was returning, they might have only lost one or two kids. So we knew they were going to have a lot of talent coming back. And the season played out that way. They're having one of their best seasons that they've had um, in many, many years. And uh, I, I think they're going to be a team to be reckoned reckon with in the playoffs. You know, their coaches have been putting in a lot of work, and they have kind of gradually gotten a little bit better every year. And uh, this year it's really showing in, in their win-loss column. He's the right that's cooler as well uh what do you need to do to come away with a win tonight Good point. i think field position is going to be important you know the wind is going to play an effect on this game so we're going to have to maintain great field position with the kicking game that's going to be uh huge and then not giving it up the deep ball he's going to complete passes he's that good um He's really good at not staring at a receiver. And for a high school quarterback, that's rare. Uh, he scans the whole field. He's got a strong arm. But what we don't want to do is give up the deep one. Uh, if we can do that defensively, I think we'll be able to be in the game. And then offensively, we've got to find a way to get some first downs, um, whether it's through the air or uh, running the ball. All right, we appreciate you taking the time, Coach, and good luck tonight. Thank you. That's Coach Brian Brenner. We'll have more when we come back. 
And welcome back in here to Carson Park. Special thanks to Brian Brenner for joining us here in our pregame show. Both teams have taken the field, and we are almost set for football here between the Ramblers and the Warriors of Nielsville Granton. Again, you talked about the, the setup here, of course. There are four teams tied atop the Cloverbelt coming into this week's play. Mondovi and Durand are the uh, other two, along with Nielsville Granton and Regis. Uh, of course, uh, Regis playing Nielsville Granton tonight, and then they will take on Osseo next week. For this Nielsville Granton team, they'll take on Elk Mound next week. And then as you look at the other uh, Cloverbelt games that will uh, occur next week, Durand at Stanley Boyd, and then you will have uh, Fall Creek at Mondovi. So none of those top four teams are going to be playing each other next week. This is really the only matchup this week of those top teams as well. So, there, again, a very good feeling, I think, that if you win tonight, uh, you've got a good chance to win the Clover Belt, uh, at least get a share of that. Of course, Mondovi beat Regis, but everybody's sort of beaten up on each other. And last week, what a win it was for Eau Claire Regis against Stanley Boyd. A big win, uh, early 9-0 deficit that they had. They emerged with a 38-24 victory. And uh, for Brian Brenner, a 4-1 conference mark, a 158-31 mark in his 16th season, trying to uh, get this team in position and not only have a chance to share the Clover Belt, but at least to host one playoff game, hopefully more than that, if they can win out the rest of the way as well. And I'm sure Nielsville Grant thinking the same thing under their head coach. In Reed Lehman in his fourth season, they are in contention. And a great night here tonight for football. All right, let's listen in for the prayer and the anthem here from Carson Park. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, tonight before our game with Nielsville Granton, we ask your blessing on the players and fans here. Please help all of us appreciate the standards of competition and fair play that represent true Christian spirit and values. Finally, we ask your help that all here enjoy this game and have a safe trip home. We pray in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now to honor America and those defending our freedom, here is our national anthem performed by members of the Regis High School Choir, Calista Danielson, Bernie Falbo, Abram, Abram Gillette, Emily Jaguish, Grace Market, Lenny Keith Pay, Mariska Remington and Dominic Santine, led by their director, Mrs. Santine. The national anthem here from Carson Park. A great evening here for football. I mean, this is about as perfect a football slash October weather you can get. 56 degrees here at game time. It's nice and chilly. Now, Brian Brenner did talk a little bit about the wind here before tonight's game. That is going to be a factor. As you see, the Ramblers about ready to uh, break through the barrier here in the north end zone. That wind will be blowing out of the north. So they're going to have the wind at their back as they run onto the field now. What that will mean for where everybody is on the field, we'll see here in a second. We know the Ramblers won the toss and elected to defer, so it will be uh, Nielsville Granton who will receive the ball uh, to start things off. Nielsville Granton going to take the field here as well. They will also announce their starting lineups here, and so they'll uh, have their lineups take the field here as well. And they've got a heck of a team and a heck of a squad this season. Bryce Erickson is the man who leads them out. As you see, Nielsville Granton, again, the Warriors here coming to today's game. 
with a lot of confidence. They have had some great wins this season as well. You look at their record, their only losses were to Colby in non-conference. Their loss was to Stanley Boyd two weeks ago. And of course, Regis coming off a two touchdown win against Stanley Boyd. That loss was 33 of 14. But they have a win at Mondovi, which not any, no other team can, uh, can sport right now. 24 to 16 win a few weeks ago against the Buffaloes. They won also at Durand, a 28 to six win. And uh, again, a, a great uh, situation there for them as they have put themselves in great position here as there come the Ramblers through the barrier. And we are almost ready for football here tonight from Carson Park. All right, your officials tonight, Pat Hammond is the white hat for the officiating crew. Ryan Nelson, Tyler Nelson, and Casey Eckert, along with Phil Fieber, are the uh, officials. And uh, to say that's an experienced crew would be an understatement there. You've got a lot of experience in officiating in football and other sports. Of course, Pat Hammond's been a long time as a uh, college official as well. And uh, Casey Eckert, uh, of course, a... Uh, uh, college basketball official also so this is a very very experienced crew coming into uh, tonight's game and that should certainly uh, provide um, some good uh, some good officiating on the uh, field here tonight. You see the Ramblers in those uh, home Kelly Green uniforms, black numbers outlined in white. The Nielsville Granton Warriors will go in the white uniforms with the red pants, red helmets, and the red numbers. They'll move from left to right, so Regis going to have the wind at their back here in quarter number one. How that affects things tonight, we do not know, of course. This is a Nielsville Granton team that loves to throw the ball, so that's going to be, the I think, the interesting part uh, for tonight's play. To see just how much uh, this wind potentially affects things. The two men back to return are Ashton Schultz and Braylon Boyer. And sets kick off here for the Ramblers tonight. Will once again be Noah Labor, their place kicker for the Ramblers. All right, Regis versus Nielsville Granton week eight. Here we go. Downfield it goes. It'll be the near side at the 15 line drive kick taken by Schultz. Pardon me, Boyer rather. Makes a move at the 25 and then gets absolutely hammered. Hammered by Colton Rocco. And a great tackle by uh, the man whose uh, brother's playing Division I college ball, the uh, junior at 5'11", 197 pounds. And here come the Warriors, and they will uh, start things off at their own 28-yard line officially. 11.55 left to play here in this first quarter. You see Erickson in the quarterback. He's got a lot of options, certainly to throw to. He'll go with a run to start, and that is snuffed out by Everett Tate. The ball came out, but the whistle had blown. They're going to give him maybe back to the line of scrimmage there on the run by Gunnar Barth up the gut. And now they'll have to uh, go to the sideline here to chat about it. There'll be no gain on the play. In fact, a loss of one. And so second and 11 coming up here for the Warriors. And I'd imagine they'll go to the air pretty quickly. Erickson, 103 for 195 on the season. That's good for 52.8%, 1,228 yards, 14 touchdowns, and six interceptions. There's an early snap. That was not supposed to be snapped as early as it was. He gets away from the pressure, now throws downfield incomplete, just past the outstretched fingertips of Braden Boyer downfield. And it will be incomplete. And a little bit of a blown-up play there as that snap came too early from their center. Did not have the snap count right, and it looks like it was the center because everybody else just kind of stayed put until uh, Bryce Erickson had to roll around a little bit. So incomplete on the pass. They go to the sideline to get the play, third and 11, from about their 28-yard line. They officially starting at the 29-yard line is where the uh, drive officially starts. And so Regis versus Nielsville Granton here on a Thursday night. You get a little bit of a sense who might be the team that's in the driver's seat to get a share of the clover belt after tonight rather than tomorrow when everybody else will play. Erickson back to pass, throws this one deep over the middle. That's caught at the 50-yard line, and off to the races goes Ashton Schultz. He's to the 20, and he's pulled down from behind at the 15-yard line. He fell right on top of, I believe that was Ian Andrews, back to make the tackle. That is a massive gain. There are no flags, I believe, on the field, but the officials haven't come down yet. Hold on a second. There is a flag. It's back at the 33-yard uh, line, and this is on Regis. They are moving downfield. Here comes Pat Hammond. Face mask, a five-yard face mask is declined. And it'll go down to the five-yard line, so a big gain on the play, and off we go. 
58 yards. 58 yards is officially the call. Seems like the Ramblers are all right there. Man who is down off the field now, and so it is first and go first and ten rather from the 15 yard line. So Erickson over the top to Schultz. Schultz came into the game with 461 yards receiving, so he's now well over 500 on his season and three touchdowns. Two receivers over to the left here for Nielsville Granton. Fake the handoff, play action, go out to the right, incomplete. They put a nice little zip on that pass to the near side for Jace Peckle, but it's incomplete. Second and 10 here for, for uh, Nielsville Granton. He can really spread it out. He can also run the ball, can Bryce Erickson. Bryce Erickson has 189 yards rushing, three rushing touchdowns as well. So there's just a lot of threats, right? I mean, for this Nielsville Granton offense. And if Regis can defend well tonight, I think that's going to spell good things, right? I mean, I think Regis can certainly keep up with their scoring, but this is a game, you know, a couple stops are going to be the big pieces here as they will give it on the end around here to Peckle on that left side, looking for blockers. He has some. A decent rush up to about the nine yard line. A couple of Ramblers in on the stop, make the play. Chase Koska is who they will give the uh, credit to. I believe Alex Burdick was uh, nearby as well. Uh, pardon me, Peyton Semling, rather. Now third and four here for Nielsville Grant needing the five-yard line. Early on, and all of a sudden, a big play, a big situation here for the Ramblers on defense. Rice Erickson, I mean, you can just tell he's got kind of all the look of a great quarterback, six foot, 182 pounds, really directs this offense. He gives a handoff up the gut. That is a first down, I think, for Gunnar Barth. It looked like he got there, but now the official coming in, I think they might be marking him short. Just outside the five. I think they said they need to get to the five here. It's going to be fourth and inches for Nielsville Grant. They're not going to get a measurement, I don't believe. Officials say that he needs to get to the five-yard line. So that is fourth and one. And now the Regis fan is going to make some noise here on the near sideline. Do you give it to Barth, the tailback, or do you get a little cheeky here? Barth, 161 pounds. They go under center. It is a pitch to Barth left side. He's got the first down and more. Muscling guys to the end zone, and he is in for the score. And that is a six-yard touchdown run for Gunnar Barth, his third of the season. And Gunnar Barth, just like that, gives Nielsville Granton the early 6-0 lead. So end up being a 71-yard touchdown drive. And it didn't take much time either. Warriors going for two. Just uh, over, or just under three minutes, I should say, on the touchdown drive. Three receivers right, one left here for... Erickson for the two and a whistle coming in and Pat Hammond didn't like something. Well, let's hear. Well, his mic was working before the game, but apparently not working now. But uh, as he uh, uh, signals for a false start. And so that will back up Nielsville Grant. We'll see if they maybe bring the extra point unit out, but they're going to go for two here. That is not going to deter them from going for it. 9.16 left to go here in the first quarter. Warriors leading 6-0 over Regis. Regis has won 14 straight against Nielsville Grant and going back to 2008. And the Warriors blowing the first punch here tonight. Looking over the middle, now a slant route. That is tipped and incomplete. No good on the two-point conversion from Erickson. So it is a 6-0 lead for Nielsville Granton. Over Regis, we'll take a quick break and we'll come back with the kickoff right after this here on the Rambler Sports Network.
And welcome back in here to Carson Park. A 71-yard touchdown drive that took two minutes and 39 seconds. A Gunner Bart six-yard touchdown run on a fourth and one conversion gives Nielsville Granton a 6-0 lead here over Regis early on. Again, you're watching here on the Regis Rambler Sports Network. Happy to have you along with us on YouTube or Facebook, wherever you might be tuning in. Tell your friends. It's where to be for Regis football. Back at it again Thursday night next week against Osseo Fairchild. Looking forward to that as well. Here comes the kickoff, and this is an onside kick, and it does not go the 10 yards. Regis jumps on it. Didn't need to there. Uh, could have just uh, taken the penalty, but they will jump on it anyway. And so Nielsville Granton trying to get a little cheeky here on the kickoff, and uh, the ball went, oh, what about eight and a half, nine yards, and then took a little bit of a sideways turn and never went the full 10. So it didn't really matter. Regis could have just let that go, probably should have let that go, but in the end they'll take it with 9.16 remaining here in this first quarter. And they'll have great field position here to start at the Nielsville Grant 47-yard line. Out come the Ramblers. Owen Weisenberger leads out this offense with Brayden Elby as the tailback. Ian Andrews, one of the wingbacks. And Chase Koska on the other wing, and it'll be Koska to get the pitch right to left. He's got a huge hole to the 40 and down near the first down marker, about a yard short. He'll get a nine-yard gain on the play. Wesley Swida was on the tackle. Second and one coming up here for Regis. There's a look. You see Weisenberger just at the edge of your screen leading this Regis team, the junior quarterback at 5'11", 162 pounds, 26 for 48. He's thrown a, a, a number of times this year, 54%, 513 yards. Of course, you know Regis... A lot of trick plays when it comes to throwing the ball. This time it is a pitch from right to left to Koska again, looking for blockers. He's got enough for the first down. Not a huge gain to the 35-yard line, about a three-yard gain. Pick up on the play. And Max Kreitlow is uh, in on the stop, along with Schultz as well. And it will be a first and 10 here for Regis. So first first down of the drive, 6-0 Warriors with the lead here early on. Mentioned the wind, about 12 miles an hour, and it's coming out of the northwest, so it's at the back, maybe a little bit right to left for the uh, Ramblers as they go. Pitching a good run here across the 30 up to about the 27-yard line. This is a, an eight-yard gain for Everett Tate. Tate came in with 448 yards rushing on the season. And 6.4 yards per rush, three touchdowns as well to his Game name. Of eight on the play. Second and about two here for Regis at the Nielsville Grant 27-yard line. Tailbacks in again. Meyer now on the left wing. He'll get the pitch this time. Following blockers has the first down and a little bit more to the 23. Brandon about a four-yard grain there for Meyer. Brandon Meyer, a senior at 5'10", 171 pounds. He so over the century mark in his last game. He's up to 107 yards on the season. Doesn't have a touchdown, though, as of yet. And, of course, that's been a trademark of Brian Brenner offenses over the years. has been all the uh, you know, number of rushers that he has in every season. Always seems like he has a ton of guys to get over at least a century mark and even more than that. So the inverted double wing. It is a pitch from right to left for Koska. He's pulled down from behind. Good pursuit there as he gets just to the 19-yard line. And I'll tell you what, Kreitlow read that really, really well. Pulled him down from behind, but still, even when you read it well and get to him, he still gets three, maybe four yards on the play as we're about to tick under seven minutes left to play here in the first quarter. A little chillier here tonight than we've uh, experienced. Heck, it was, uh, what, 90 Seven degrees on Monday, I think it was, and uh, now we're already down to 50, uh, 56 degrees here at game time. They will give it to Alby, the tailback. Makes a nice cut to the right side. He's to the 10. Another cut to the 5. And he's dragged down from behind at about the 4-yard line. Tackled once again by Braylon Boyer, but not before. He gets 16 yards and a first down. And it's first and goal here for Regis. So Regis going in is on the doorstep here. As you see, Weisenberger going to center. He's got Andrews and Koska in there, and it is Andrews gets the pitch. Up the middle he goes to the end zone. He is in for the score, and we are tied at six with 6.27 left to play here in the first quarter. And Ian Andrews has the rushing touchdown, his fifth of the year. And Brian Brenner is holding up a one. You know, we usually see Brian Brenner go for two the first time they score, but I think because of the miss for Nielsville Granton, they're going to go for the extra point which is a little bit uh, unlike them. Noah Labor is out to attempt it. Still 
Snap spot, kick is up, and the kick is good. Didn't get through by much, but it was accurate, and it's 7-6 to six Regis. 6.27 left to go first quarter. We'll come back right after this on the Ramblers Sports Network. Welcome back in again to Carson Park. The Ramblers take it right back downfield after Nielsville. Granton scores the opening touchdown of the game in a two-minute, 39-second drive. Regis, two-minute, 49-second drive. Seven plays, 47 seconds. A four-yard touchdown run for Ian Andrews. Caps it off, and now Regis gets set to kick it off again. So, so far, the defenses have uh, been a little bit absent, and it's been the offense that has been impressive for both teams thus far. It's kind of a short line drive kick taken by one of the upbacks at the 25-yard line. Trying to make some moves, and across the 30 to about the 33 goes Wesley Switta, where he's taken down at the 33-yard line, about an eight-yard return. And they will start will the Warriors at their own 33. 621 remains here in the first quarter. That was seven plays, 47 yards on the Ian Andrews. Touchdown drive. Ten yard kickoff return. Remember, tomorrow night is when the rest of the Clover Belt gets uh, going. Durand is hosting Mondovi, Stanley Boyd at Elk Mound, and Fall Creek at Osseo Fairchild. None of the other games going into tomorrow's play. Bryce Erickson again in the shotgun, hands it off on an end around here to Barth. Barth had the play extended. Great containment there by. The Ramblers, wow, really well done. Multiple Ramblers out there on the edge. Rockow certainly one of those guys along uh, with Noah Taurus. Olsen there as well as you hear. And Colton Rocco certainly a welcome addition to this defense. Didn't start to start the season, but he's really come on strong. And nice to see him in there as well. Couple-yard loss, second and about 12 here for uh, Nielsville Granton. Erickson back to pass, looks left, throws it out of the backfield. It is off the fingertips and incomplete of Barth. And he had some wide open green in front of him. There was not a whole lot of Ramblers closing in. He looked like he would have had a pretty positive gain, and if he made a play or two, could have definitely made a first down. But now a little bit too strong. You wonder if the wind maybe affected that just a little bit. Erickson a pretty accurate thrower, but that one not nearly as... Uh, on the money as it needed to be. I'm sure that Barth would tell you that he should have made the play, but in the end, it is an incompletion. Two receivers go to the left. That's Boyer and Schultz out wide left. Boyer in the slot. Barth to the left of Erickson. Erickson back to pass, looks left the entire way, steps up, has got pressure, gets away from it. Initially, he's going to run. He's got the first down and more to the 40, into plus territory, and he slides down at the Rambler 48-yard line, and that is an absolutely gorgeous gain of about uh, what, 22 yards and a first down here for Nielsville Grant. And I'll tell you what, just looking at Bryce Erickson, there's a reason that uh, Brian Brenner said he's the best quarterback in the Clover Belt. I mean, he just has the look and the poise of a kid who could play on Saturdays, play at the next level in that quarterback position. Very cool, calm, and collected back there. Never panicked when the pressure got back and when the pocket collapsed and all the Ramblers were kind of behind him. He saw wide open spaces, and that's exactly what he took advantage of. They're going to spread it out here. Empty backfield for Nielsville. Now they will bring... Uh, Jace Peckle over to the right of Erickson. Looks like a little bit of confusion here before they snap this ball. First and 10 from the Rambler, 48. He will step up in the pocket, will sling this one over the middle. Catch made, but a big hit put on Switta at the 42-yard line, a gain of seven on the play. Ramblers were there, but until everybody kind of stopped, I think they were worried about making helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact. And 
Ends up being a seven-yard gain, uh, maybe a six-yard gain, and a second and four coming up here for Nielsville Grant. 4.20 left to go, first quarter. Seven to six, Ramblers lead it. Erickson has looked very solid so far here tonight. And the first touchdown, though, is a rushing touchdown for Barth. He'll empty the backfield again. Three receivers left, two to the right. And back to pass he goes. Looks left the entire way. Pressure coming. Takes the hit, but the catch made at the 30. And a move to the 20. To the near side, 10 to the 5. And, oh, he fumbled the ball. This might be a touchback. Let's see what the officials call it. He grabbed it out of bounds. The fumble came from Boyer, and that's a touchback. Holy cow, what a play. What a play on the tackle from behind. I believe that was Everett Tate who made it. And he loses possession right at the goal line. Of course, we don't have a camera right on the goal line. But, man, that is as close as it gets to still having possession. And, when and again, Nielsville Granton recovered that, but they recovered it out of bounds in the back of the end zone. And the play that, uh, well, you hear plenty of people complain about it on Sundays, the play that uh, results in a touchback on a fumble like that. And just like that, it is a turnover to Regis. And, boy, what a turn of events on that fumble. And give that to Everett Tate. I mean, that is... That is the biggest of big plays that you can make. I mean, he just literally wipes, not only wipes six points off the board, but he gets the Ramblers the ball back. I mean, this is impressive here. 353 remains in the first quarter, and that was a absolutely massive play. Now the Aces formation here for Regis. They'll send Koska in motion left to right. Snap coming. The handoff given to Andrews. A little reverse here. They will give it in the backfield. No, he'll keep it himself. Far sideline. There he goes. Andrews is off to the races, and he is gone. It's an 80-yard touchdown run. The Warriors had no idea it was coming. And just like that, how about a 12-point swing? 13-6 Ramblers lead. Holy cow. Ian Andrews held onto it on the reverse. And how about that? Everett Tate looked like he was going to be tackled. And he was going to be handed the ball. He literally looks at the defender and says, dude, I don't have the ball, man. <laughs> see you later. We'll see you at the other goal line. Holy cow. Weisenberger to hold. You've got labor to kick. Snap spot, kick up, and the kick is good. 14 to 6. Ramblers with a gut punch to the Warriors. 14 to 6. They lead at 340 left to go first quarter. Back after this on the Ramblers Sports Network. If you are just tuning in, you missed quite a bit here at Carson Park. The Ramblers go 80 yards on one play from Ian Andrews on a fake reverse. And into the end zone he goes. And I'll tell you what, the play before Everett Tate forcing a fumble by Braylon Boyer at the goal line and then couldn't recover it before the ball went out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Then Regis gets it back at the 20 on the touchback. Goes 80 yards on the first play. I mean, that is an absolute... You talk about a turnaround as Nielsville Granton's going to fall on the ball. Max Kreitlow at his uh, own 34-yard line, and that is where Nielsville Granton will take over. Now, I mean, you know, the game's not over. Like, don't get me wrong here. There's plenty of time left, but, well, i got to imagine that sideline for Nielsville Granton Max is uh, not feeling too great after this last sequence. I mean, you talk about everything going the right way for Regis. That's exactly what has happened here in the last two plays. And now Nielsville Granton is down by eight and having to kind of re hit the reset button. So off we go. Bryce Erickson back at quarterback, and he will send Barth out as a receiver to the right. And the empty backfield again. So they spread things out from their own 34. He's going to run with it. Up he goes. He gets wrapped up, though, and stopped. 
stopped right at the line of scrimmage and a great job recognizing that and stepping up to make the tackle with Preston Olsen. Or pardon me, Kovacevic they called the tackle. I thought it was Olsen, but uh, my mistake. Second and 10 here for Nielsville Grant. So good job there by the Ramblers. They tried to spread them out. And they just kind of stayed, you know, gap discipline right up the gut, make the tackle. Second and 10 now from the 34. And they'll send Barth out as a receiver. Looks like they might have a legal formation there. Now he's going to run again, gets away from the initial tackle. And then he's hit from behind. That's a fumble. And the Ramblers fall. Oh, they're calling it incomplete. Holy cow. Oh, he got hit from behind. It was recovered by Olsen. And I don't know about that one. That looked like it might have been an empty hand coming forward. There was not a lot of uh, control there. They're going to call it incomplete third and ten. And I think the Warriors might be uh, might have gotten away with one there. Regis could have really turned the screws here, but was called incomplete. On the hit from behind, third and ten now here for Nielsville Grant. Erickson spreads everybody out. You got Gavin Barth, who's the far receiver, and Gunner is the slot receiver, the running back, along with Jace Peckel on that side. And then Schultz and Boyer here near side. Erickson back to pass, looks near side. Wants to throw this one deep. It is up and incomplete. Never had a chance to get that one to Boyer. Just overthrew it. And that maybe again, I mean, he's throwing into the wind about. You know, what an out route that you need to throw it about 30 yards or so. So he's probably thinking, I need to launch this one further. And who knows, right? The wind dies down a little bit. You end up overthrowing it, which is what happened there. And so now a punt coming up uh, for Nielsville. Granton down by eight with 2.42 left to play here in this first quarter. Back to punt for Nielsville. Granton, Sam Hayes standing at his own 21-yard line or so. Harrison Haas back deep to receive the punt. And it is Harrison Haas who is back to return, the junior running back. It's a wobbling spiral. Haas comes up to make the fair catch, probably could have returned that one. 39-yard line is where the Ramblers will take over. And Regis back in business here at their own 30, I think they're marking it at the, yeah, 39-yard line. 237 remains here in this first quarter. Owen Weisenberger leads out. Gang Green onto the field. Brandon Meyer in lineup as one of the wingbacks. I'll be the tailback. Weisenberger will pitch it to Koska, right to left. Student body right to left. Follows his blockers, gets hit hard out of bounds at the sideline. About a four, maybe five yard gain. Tackle on the play by Jace Peckle. Jace Peckle on the tackle. Yeah, a four-yard gain, second and six. So the run from Koska, we talked about him coming in. He averages about five he yards per five run. And with that run and with his runs earlier tonight, he should be over the 400-yard mark on the season now. Came in with 388 yards on the ground, four touchdowns as second well. Regis as a squad, as you might imagine, averages 211 yards rushing per game. Inverted double wing again. They'll pitch it to Andrews, the uh, hero so far tonight. And he yeah, has a good Andrews game there, the about three, to the 47-yard line to bring up third and two. Andrews has both of the rushing touchdowns, both of the touchdowns, I should say, for Regis here tonight. Andrews a little bit slow getting off the field, but seems to be fine. Casca as well as Meyer back in as the wingbacks. Here for the Ramblers. Weisenberg to go under center in the inverted double wing in the 49 for a first down. Under two minutes left to play here in the quarter. There's the pitch, and that is the first down and more for Koska. Into Nielsville Granton territory to the 47-yard line. About a six-yard gain and a first down for the Ramblers. So they will move the sticks. And they seem content to eat a little bit of clock here at the end of this first quarter. Andrews and Tate. The two wingbacks in there for the Ramblers at the moment. If they uh, keep that inverted Ramblers double wing formation, and that's exactly what they'll do. 47 is where the first drive started for them. They'll fake the handoff. They want to throw it. Weisenberger goes over the top, and it's incomplete. Well, you see the wind really pushing that ball 
downfield for uh, him. That's George Walters' store if it was intended for. And uh, that ball really got away from him there. Again, the wind is blowing at his back, and you could just see that ball carry a little bit. I, even if there wasn't wind, I think he probably overthrows him, but not by nearly as much as he did. And so that's an adjustment, right? That's Weisenberger's first uh, throw of the game. So you kind of assume that it might be a little bit hard to be accurate, especially as you're throwing deep over the middle like that. Second and 10, inverted double wing. Pitch goes to the right wing this time for Regis. That's Casca to the 43-yard line, about a four-yard gain. Now third and six, though, so this is uh, certainly what Nielsville Granton wants. They want Regis in these longer third down situations. 14 to six, as you see, Ramblers with the lead here on the Rambler Sports Network. Gain of four, third and six for the Ramblers at the Weisenberger under center. He's got Tate and Koska in there as the wingbacks. And he will give it to Tate. And they are going to go gangrene to the right side. Tate looking for a hole. Hesitates, waits, now cuts it. He's got the first down. What patient running from Everett Tate to the 35-yard line. Eight-yard gain on the play. First down, Ramblers. 50 seconds remain here in the first quarter. So one more play for sure for the Ramblers needs to be run to end out this uh, first quarter. But what a first quarter it has been. We have had some fireworks with that. Again, that fumble that was created by Everett Tate that resulted in a touchback. Ball went out of the back of the end zone as it looked like Nielsville Granton was going in for the go-ahead score with about three minutes left to go in the first quarter here. And then next play after the touchback, Ian Andrews took it for an 80-yard touchdown, and that's the difference. Now Andrews again. Up the gut he goes. He's got a lot of blockers. Just kind of lowers his shoulder, lowers the boom, Ian up Andrews the middle to the 27-yard line, and that should be enough for about eight yards and a second and two coming up. And that will take us to the end of quarter number one. A very solid start for Regis as they look for a chance for a share of the Clover Belt with a win tonight. To put them in good position going into the final week of the season next week. They're doing well. End of the first, second quarter after this here at Carson Park on the Rambler Sports Network. Welcome back in here to Carson Park. Eau Claire Regis on offense here to start this second quarter as it's a 14-6 lead for the Ramblers. And another pitch up the gut and a big run for Everett Tate as he runs a defender over across the 20. And up near the 18-yard line, Wesley Switta on the tackle, but not before. About a, let's see, a nine-yard gain and a first down for the Ramblers as they are absolutely rolling uh, here tonight. 14-6, they lead it. As we start this second quarter, and again, we have had some exciting plays so far. Ian Andrews has both the rushing touchdowns uh, for the Ramblers thus far. And Verda double wing again here for Weisenberger and company. It's a pitch to Ian Andrews. Ian Andrews following blockers to the right, but this is filled up pretty well by the uh, defense. In fact, they ripped it away. Reese McDonald says he's got the ball, but he was on the ground, and so was Andrews when he ripped it out of there. So. Not a turnover, just a uh, good tackle and just a two-yard gain. So second and eight here for Regis coming up. In the red zone they go. Again, the Ramblers have been there once before already tonight. Uh, Four-yard touchdown eight, run for Ramblers me and Andrews with 627 left in the first quarter. Got Regis on the board tonight. 80-yard touchdown run from him as well. Here's Koska cutting it up the gut, and he will lower the shoulder into a defender to about Chase the 11-yard line. I think that was Hoser on the tackle. 
Sweeta and Bryce Erickson on the tackle for the Warriors. Say Erickson and Sweeta were there as well. Third and about two here for Regis. Need to get it just inside the nine for a first down. The ball just Third outside the 10, the as you Ramblers can see. At the Warrior 10. Third and two. As the Ramblers are knocking on the door. They have scored on every drive they have had so far tonight. Weisenberger under center, inverted double wing. Hard count. He'll pitch it to Tate. Tate just going to cut it up the middle. Counters, spins to the two. And he is down there with an eight-yard gain, and it's first and goal here for Regis. Gavin Barth with the tackle. And it will be Ramblers knocking on the door here at the start of the second quarter. Regis comes into the game averaging a total of 23 points per game. They have 284 yards of offense per game as well. And again, 211 on the ground per game, and they are showing that off here tonight thus far. Ten minutes left to go, second quarter. A handoff to Alby in the backfield. He pushes the pile. Of ball broke the pile, broke the plane, rather, and he is in for the score. And Brandon Alby up the gut for his third touchdown of the season. And a two-yard touchdown run is now the rain begins to fall here at Carson Park. And with 9.57 remaining in the second quarter, it is all Regis as they take the lead 20-6. Noah laboring to attempt the extra point. Owen Weissenberger holding. Alby with the two-yard touchdown run. Here comes the extra point attempt, and Weisenberger is going to fake this one, roll out the catch. No, it was for Alby. Maybe a little bit of a slippery ball there, incomplete. 20 to 6. Regis with the lead. 9.57 remains second quarter. We're back right after this here on the Ramblers Sports Network. some rain as you can see here on the Rambler Sports Network. The rain's starting to come down and come down in sheets. Again, we talked about the wind earlier tonight and you can see the way the rain is moving kind of from right to left across your screen from the north to the south end zone. And so uh, it was already kind of a windy night and a chilly night here as well. And now we got a little more elements to add to this. So Regis with a 20 to six lead could be all that the doctor ordered for uh, Regis as we get into the later stages of this game. Now, again, Bryce Eric's going to have the wind at his back, but the ball going to be wet. So this is going to be a uh, tough sledding for a team that likes to throw the ball here in Nielsville Grant. Ready for the kickoff. And the run-up here is Regis will just squib this one, try to pick up a little perspiration, if you will, a little precipitation from the turf. And Swit is taken down at the 39-yard line. And that is where Nielsville Granton starts off. No threat, I believe, of storms from what I uh, heard, at least in the forecast tonight. So we might just have to deal with uh, some uh, rain this evening. So the squib kick right up the gut. Own 39 is where start off. So Regis has scored on all three of their drives tonight. And now we got papers flying around. We got all kinds of fun happening here at Carson Park tonight. Thank goodness we're in a press box, right? Back to pass is Erickson looking over the middle, steps up, throws. It is incomplete, and it's going to be tough. I mean, now we're at the point you can even see is getting up there was the intended receiver in Andrew Hoser. And I mean, he's wiping his hands off that now throwing the ball is not going to be easy. And I mean, you're down 14 points, two scores. I mean, this is uh, this is a danger territory for a team in Nielsville Grant who's not really built for these kind of situations and a very good team. Don't get me wrong, but it's just. You look at a team like Regis who just runs, runs, runs. I mean, that's just the kind of night for a team like the Ramblers. Erickson with two receivers to the right, second and 10 from his own 39-yard line. 
He will keep it himself on the uh, keeper. He gets some good yardage, but there is a flag. This one looks like it's coming back. 11-yard game, but this is in the area of holding. And we'll hear from Pat Hammond in just a moment. But you can see the flag right there back at the 36-yard line. And again, I, that was a late flag that came in here, too. I wonder if we have a live ball, dead ball penalty situation here. And so the officials have to sort this one out. If it's a live ball, dead ball, you might have both penalties marked off. If this is a personal foul on Regis, you could be looking at a first down for Nielsville Grant and not offsetting. So let's see if we can hear from Pat Hammond. He's had some microphone issues tonight. If not, we'll uh, interpret. Holding on Nielsville Granton. It's a face mask, a five-yard face mask on Regis. They're going to offset those penalties, and we're going to replay the down. So uh, two fouls on a play. There he comes. Uh, got a hold on the offense. Five-yard face mask on the defense. We're going to replay the down. There you go. I mean, the fact that we were being uh, denied Pat Hammond on the microphone tonight is just, I mean, the, the – the amount of drama that just got added to this game by his microphone starting to work is, is something that I think everybody's excited about. Here's a fake handoff to Barth. They want to go deep over the middle. It is up, tipped, and incomplete. Thrown a little bit behind Ashton Schultz. If it was a better throw, he might have had a chance at the catch. But then the ball just kind of sat up there tantalizingly for a rambler to try to pick it off. Instead of incompletion, a third and ten now here for Nielsville Granton. And... Their own 39-yard line, so they need to get it almost to midfield for a first down here. Again, the rain's still coming down, as you can see, here at Carson Park, and that creating problems for everybody. The is you know, Two receivers out to the left. Boyer in the slot. Schultz out wide left for Erickson on third and 10. Erickson takes the snap. Regis is bringing the blitz. He'll throw it over the middle. It is up and incomplete. Boy, is late putting his arms up there. Was Hoser to try to complete that or try to catch that pass. I don't know if he was trying to to deke the defender and uh, you know try to say, oh, the ball's not coming to me, and then put his hands up just at the last moment. But not really sure what the plan was there. Now fourth and ten. Haas back to return a punt here for Nielsville Grant. I mean, we could see we could see a 60-yard punt here. I mean, the wind is right at the back of Nielsville Grant. And so Haas has to be, you know, try to get in front of this one. He has to try to at least catch this so that. He can Sammy save some yards, but this ball is ticketed for the end zone if he gets it anywhere in the air on this punt, standing in his own 25. Oh, it's fumbled. Fumbled, and down he goes, and Regis is going to have great field position. So a botched, I mean, it was a pretty good snap. It was just right into the bread basket, and again, it's a wet ball, and it was just bobbled, and Nielsville Granton officially will go, to, go over as a turnover on downs, and Regis is in business. And they have had great field position tonight. They're going to start off at the 29-yard line here. And that was only a, what, a 32-second drive with all the incompletions. So Regis back on to it now and a chance to really turn the screws here. I'll go with the inverted double wing, and you'll see plenty of running, I think, the rest of the night. They will give it on a counter play here, right to left for Regis. That's Austin right out, and he doesn't have much. Maybe got a half a yard. Austin right out getting a rare carry. That's only his fourth carry of the season. At 11 yards coming into the game. A sophomore at six foot, 270 pounds. I mean, he almost looks more like a, a tight end in this offense, but he gets a carry and just uh, couldn't find many, much space there on that left side. So a second, uh, second and 10 situation Ramblers. now here for the Ramblers. Koska on the right, wing side. Instead it's a pitch and it's a bobble and it's a fumble and a chance for a scoop and score. But what a play there by Meyer to tackle the recoverer in Ashton Schultz. But the Regis gives it right back. And now Nielsville Granton has it at their own 42. So a fumble on the pitch. And Nielsville Granton takes over and basically just gives them the ball back about where they had it on their last drive. So it's kind of flipping the script, if you will. Now 8.40 left to go here in this second quarter, that 20 to 6 Rambler lead. And 
And first and 10 here for Nielsville Grant. Let's see if they keep it in the air, if they maybe go to the ground here a bit. They've got Barth to give it to, and they will. Trying to bounce it out left. He's got a decent hole, and then he's hit across the, near the 45-yard line. Tackled by Regis is Alex Burdick. What a three-yard gain, second and seven here for this Warrior team. We're talking about the total stats for Regis, I mean, you look at the other side, about 300 yards per game of offense that uh, Nielsville Granton gets, and they get 177 of those, those yards through the air and about 120 on the ground. So this is a team that is built to throw, and now when the rain's letting up a little bit here, it's harder to see that drizzle that's coming down. Still some, though, is. And they will fake the handoff to Barth. Rolling right, Erickson wants to throw this one. Deep's got a man wide open. Did Andrews get there? No, it's caught and in for the score goes Braylon Boyer. And he is in for the touchdown on a 55-yard touchdown pass. Ian Andrews, I don't think he ever saw the ball there. And if he did, I think he had a chance not only to deflect that, but maybe even to pick that one off. But just kind of misread it there. And Erickson goes to Boyer for the 55-yard touchdown. For Boyer now, that is his seventh touchdown of the season. And just like that, Nielsville Granton right back into it. And then we'll go for two. Erickson in the shotgun here. 20 to 12 is the score. And now Regis almost jumped offside. They'll pitch it on an end around. This is Hoser on the right side. He did not get it. Good job there by the Ramblers. I believe Albie was in on the stop. It's a 20 to 12 lead for Regis. 7.52 remains here in the second quarter. Back after this here on the Ramblers Sports Network. Back in here to Eau Claire and Carson Park. Eau Claire Regis with a eight-point lead at the moment, a one-score lead, 7.52 remaining in this second quarter. Felt like Erickson and company kind of got it together there on that long pass from him to Braden Boyer, who has now seven touchdown receptions on the season, and Bryce Erickson with 15 touchdown passes on the year as well. And so a 55-yard strike, and just like that, the Warriors right back into it. Regis going to have to be... On the ball here and see if they can take care of the ball, unlike what they did on their last drive. A little squib kick that will be scooped up at about the 18-yard line. Here comes a return for Regis by Haas, I do believe, up to the uh, 35. And the Regis Ramblers will start there. Austin Gross and Aiden Sternitsky on the tackle. 7.48 remains here in this first half. 17-yard kickoff return. And like we said, the Ramblers will come back after it next week. Take on Osseo Fairchild. They can pick up these two wins. I think they're in line for at least one playoff game, maybe two, here at home. But again, all that to be decided in Division 7. And, but we have home games in the playoffs. We'll have them here uh, for sure on the Ramblers Sports Network. If they're on the road, we're, we're figuring out the logistics of that. Here's Casca with a pitch. And he's taken down from behind after about a three, maybe a four-yard gain to the 39-yard line. The ball carrier, Max so again, Kreitlow was in on the stop, and sure enough, he was. Second and six. You can see the rain still falling. It's been, for a minute, it looked like it was letting up. Now it's coming down a little bit harder. Not as hard as it did when it first started falling about 15, 20 minutes ago. Ramblers versus Nielsville Granton here, week eight of the nine-week WIAA football season. Inverted double wing again. They will pitch to Andrews. Goes left to right. He's got a hole. Does he have a first down? He's close. Casey Eckert's marking him just about a ball short here on the near side. And so he's a, it's about five and a half yards. And now 
It'll be third and short here for the Ramblers. Like we said, a pretty experienced officiating crew. Casey Eckert doesn't miss many. And he was right on top of that, that he was about a ball short of the uh, 45, which is the line to gain. Weisenberger under center. Hard count. Pitch will go left to right and a first down, but just barely got it. Now staying on his feet here around the edge. And that's Everett Tate. We'll get the first down to the 49-yard line. It's five in the end. Looked like he was in some trouble at the start of that run, but just kind of kept churning the leg, stayed on his feet, and it's five yards on the plate as Everett Tate. Tate with the big defensive play tonight that forced the fumble that caused a touchback in the first quarter. And it looked like uh, Nielsville Granton was going in for their second score. Fumbled right on, right before the goal line, said the officials. And it's Albie who's going to get the tailback draw play here, and he doesn't have much. Maybe two in a Nielsville Granton territory from 149 to the other. And it will be second and eight now here for Regis. You can feel the wind blowing into the booth just a touch. I mean, we're not getting too much rain coming in this way, but you can definitely feel that cool breeze and that cold rain falling down. I'm sure making it not terribly fun down there, but of course here on the field turf, you don't see the mud stains or anything like that that maybe is the fun part of playing in the rain at this point in the season. Here's a pitch to Tate again, and he does not have much. Got taken down immediately by Ashton Schultz. Also saw Preston Berg there as Next well. And it's going to be third and about six here or so. They're calling it five on the board. This looks closer to six to me than it does five here for Regis. Ball, as you see, right between the uh, 47 and 46. Nielsville Grant sideline trying to make some noise here. 5.09 left to go in this second quarter. Hard count. And the pitch to Andrews. Andrews following blockers. Can he stay up? He can. He got hit from behind. Boy, he's close. Casey Eckert coming in. There was a hit from behind. I think that it was put on by Aiden Sturzinski. And if not for that hit, I mean, he was down short. But now he's only about a half yard short. And I'm sure Regis will go for it just a half yard away, feeling confident that they can pick it up. Now let's see if Nielsville Grand overloads the middle of the offense or defense here. Fans are going to make some noise. Casca, the right wing tailback, I believe Tate on the left wing. Weisenberger, hard count. Pitch to Casca. Casca cuts. He's got the first down. He's got more. Keep churning across the 40, near the 35. He gets about six yards on the play, and it's a first down here for Regis. You know, when they get those fourth and short, they feel pretty confident that they can pick them up most of the time. I mean, you got to have. Somebody make a real good individual play to kind of blow up one of those run plays, get in the backfield. If you know, if not for one mistake right now, Regis could easily be up by at least two scores, if not more. That one fumble kind of looming large right now. Here's a hard count. They will pitch to Andrews, left to right, short side of the field, just follows his tacklers or his blockers rather, and steps out of bounds at the 34-yard line, so only gets about two on the play. It's kind of a classic move. That's the old Joe Labuda move from Menominee, right? When you get the ball on your side of the field, just keep running it to your side. You've got all your subs there. I mean, with the hash marks as far as far apart as they are in high school football, no need to go to the far side of the field. Just keep it on your sideline. That's what he does there. So now Weisenberger goes under center, eating up some clock as well. 3.56 remains here in the quarter. There's the pitch to Casca. Casca, again, just student body left on the cut. It's the 32, only about two on the play. Now another long one here, third and six coming up for Regis. So it's a good job by Nielsville Granton on the couple of pretty good stops here on the first two plays of this set of downs. 20 to 12, Ramblers lead it. This is the fifth drive of the game for Regis. They've scored on three of their first four. Coming into this one, third and six. It is a pitch out to the right, and it is blown up. There's the individual play you were looking for. Max Kreitlow gets into the backfield and tackles the runner in Ian Andrews for a big loss back to the 38-yard line. Six-yard loss on the play, and Regis is going to play a field position game here. And At the moment, the wind is relatively calm compared to where it's been the last, I'd say, 20, 25 minutes. So if Regis can get this ball snapped and punted, they can maybe pin 
Nielsville Grant inside the 10 yard line. Schultz and Boyer back. Oh, bobbled snap. He'll get it away. Wobbling spiral. Will it take a Regis bounce at will? Inside the 15. Oh, there it's scooped up at the 12. A dangerous play. Saves a couple of yards there for Nielsville Granton. See who scooped that. That was Boyer over there. That was uh, an interesting decision, certainly. And Liebham with the uh, cunt, or the, uh, the uh, punch, rather. And uh, get it to the what the 14 yard line it is, and so that is where uh, Nielsville Granton will take over. So Regis with the punt, and I'll tell you what, uh, Nielsville Granton got to feel pretty good about what they've done here the last couple of minutes. Now that drive did take about five minutes off the clock. First and ten for the Warriors at their own 14. Own 14 is where they start. Erickson hands it off. Up the gut it goes to Barth. And doesn't have much. Maybe two to the 16-yard line. Preston Semling on the tackle. Semling, as you hear, is uh, the man to get the tackle. Landon and Preston have uh, been factoring in up on that defensive line. Second and eight coming up here for Nielsville Granton. They're content to take some time off the clock here. I think the Warriors don't want to score quickly or they don't want to give the ball back to Regis with a second chance for them to the score. The Regis is going to receive 16. the uh, opening second half kickoff. Hand off to Barth on the right side. Pretty conservative. And Peckle, get the carrier. carry up to about the 19-yard line. Pardon me, that was uh, not Barth, rather. That was Jace Peckle on the carry. Peckle came in just under 100 yards rushing in the ball game or in the uh, season rather and now about a third and five third and four in that range here for Nielsville Granton all right at the 20 yard line maybe 19 here Erickson back to pass pumps oh he lost the ball there's the old tuck rule they're gonna call that an incompletion or a fumble I think they're calling that a fumble and now a whistle a timeout for Brian Brenner Boy, we had went right back to the old Tom Brady days there in the tuck roll. He went for the pump, and he's trying to bring it back down and then lost the handle in the wet night here. Now the rain has stopped for the moment. That timeout, Regis is going to uh, save some time with 1.16 remaining in this first half. And good for Regis because, again, that ends up being a big loss of almost 10 yards back to the 11-yard line. That will be an 8-yard loss officially. And so it's going to be fourth. And time about 14 here for Nielsville Granton. And this is where Regis now Thank can get a little bit uh, creative here on special Schneider teams. They can try to maybe try to block this punt. Now, again, the wind is going to be at the back of Nielsville Granton. So if they get a good boot into it, this ball can travel a long ways. Not quite as uh, breezy as it's been at the start of the night, but it's still blowing pretty hard down there. Like I said, for the moment, the rain has stopped. So that is, a, I'm sure, a welcome sign for Nielsville Granton tonight. As they want to go through the air, and, and that'll be key, I think, in the second half uh, for them. So back to punt here is Sam Hayes. Back to return is Haas. Haas standing just about at the 50-yard line. Hayes, as you see, is a few yards deep in his end zone. Now let's see Sam if Regis Hayes can get some uh, pressure Hayes here. Hayes Snap is a little high. Hayes gets to it, though, and this is kind of a knuckling punt that is going to take a – oh, that's going to just kind of stop. That was a little uh, pitching wedge there with a little uh, backspin. Stops at the 41-yard line, so that is where Regis takes over. That's just a 31-yard punt, especially with the wind at his back. That's a little bit of a – under expectations, if you will, there for Nielsville Granton. So Regis comes back out up by eight with 106 to go in the second quarter. They've got two timeouts and a pretty short field in front of them. So, I mean, this should be go time here for Regis. They've had some opportunities in the second quarter. Haven't really taken advantage of them. Again, they got the ball at the 29-yard uh, line of Nielsville Granton, and they fumbled the ball on uh, only, I believe, the second play of that drive. Timeout, Nielsville. And Nielsville Granton is going to take a timeout here to kind of talk about the approach for this last minute six. I don't think they need to worry too much about stopping the clock to try to get the ball back. They seemed relatively content with trying to uh, trying to 
you know, kind of take this current score into the locker room. They were trying to run some clock there at the end of the uh, first, I was the last couple of minutes, I should say, at the end of this first half. <laughs> and 106 remaining here in the second quarter. 20 to 12, Regis with the lead. Again, Mondovi at Durand, Stanley Boyd at Elk Mound, Fall Creek at Osseo are the uh, games going on tomorrow. It should be a lot of fun. Again, next week as well, Regis will play on Thursday. So Regis can potentially, you know, if they get a win tonight, they could, before anybody plays on Friday next week, they could win against Osseo Fairchild and lock up at least a share of the conference before anybody else plays. So that will be the uh, nice part about playing back-to-back uh, -back Thursday nights for the Ramblers. All right, here we go. And now hires that big spread formation that we like to see. One receiver left, three to the right for Weisenberger. Throws it out of the backfield. Koska makes the catch, but he is hitting the backfield for a loss of a couple. And that is a great open field tackle by Bryce Erickson and a whistle and a timeout taken by Regis. I'm going to call this a loss of one on the play. Koska made the catch. There was pressure getting into the backfield quickly, and so Weisenberger had to get rid of it. And, I mean, if Koska makes one man miss, he's got a real good chance at a big gain. But unfortunately for him, could not quite make that one play. And Erickson made a great open field tackle, as you see. Also a two-way guy can play on that defensive side of the ball as well. In fact, he comes into the game as the leading, uh, pardon me, the uh, uh, third leading tackler on this Nielsville Grant team with 42 total tackles. He's got four interceptions. Six tackles for loss, two forced fumbles, and one fumble recovery coming into tonight's action. So he certainly has uh, not only done what he's done on the offensive side, but he's been a big defensive piece as well. Sort of as a, let's call him a hybrid safety linebacker. As you see him standing wearing that number 15 jersey near the uh, hash marks at the 43-yard line. Or pardon me, the 37-yard line. Weisenberger back to pass on the shotgun slant route. That ball is caught. Good job going down to get it near the sticks, but not a first down. Tate makes the catch. Clock running, 46-45 left to play here in the first quarter. And third and one coming up for Regis, so they got to run quick, but they need to get some yardage here and get the first down. Three receivers right, one left. Hard count. Weisenberger takes the snap, looks over the middle. Little pop pass. It is caught somehow by Koska. I think he's got the first down. Yeah, Casey Eckert's giving it to him. Looked like the forward progress was right around the 30. They're going to mark it at the 31. I thought he had it. Now, Regis is taking a timeout regardless. Casey Eckert's giving him the first down. Now, the headline judge on the other side is pointing down right at the 31. Eckert's giving him a little bit more. They haven't. Uh, they've marked the ball, as you can see right there. Pat Hammond and the umpire right at the 31. I, they have not moved the chains yet. I wonder if they're coming out for a... Uh, Measurement here. Correction, that's the Ramblers' third and final timeout for the first time. But I mean, we're looking. I believe it is this going to be fourth and inches? I think it's going to be fourth and inches here for Regis. Unless I'm missing it down. Yeah, it is fourth down. For a moment there, I thought I thought I'd had an extra play in my head, but that wasn't the case. It is fourth and one. I mean, fourth and inches. They are really close. I thought Casca had better. Uh, for progress and what the officials gave him. But, I mean, he is, what, a half a ball, I think, outside the first down marker. Inverted double win here, and Regis has used all their timeouts as well. Here's the pitch. Regis has the first down. Can they get any more from Tate? They'll get to the 28-yard line, and that will move the chains, and it will stop the clock momentarily. They'll wait till the chains are set, and then Pat Hammond will roll the clock, and that's what he will do. And now a uh, ground here, and it is second down. We saw Nielsville Granton try to jump that snap, but uh, not the case. And so Regis will make a, some quick substitutions here. I think a little bit of confusion as to who's getting into the game. Second and 10, though, is uh, the situation at the 28-yard line of Nielsville Granton. 21 seconds remain and no timeouts for Regis. They burn through them all. Two timeouts for the Warriors if they want to take any. Now, again, you have... For Regis, Noah Labor, yeah, this would be outside of his range right now for a field. They need at least, I think, another 10 to 15 yards to feel relatively confident about a field goal. Weisenberger back to pass, throws it to the far sideline. It is caught, but inbounds. Clock going to stop momentarily at the 15-yard line. That was Ian Andrews with the reception of 13 yards. 
They will roll the clock when the snap is taken. Let's see if they go up to the line to spike it. I, I would spike it here with only 15 seconds left. Wind the clock, says Pat Hammond. Weisenberger to the line. I think they're going to run a play here. No, he's going to spike it. Boy, he didn't need to take that much time to spike it. Should have been under center before they uh, wound the clock and probably lost, what, three or four seconds more than he needed to. In fact, he even bobbled that snap a little bit before he threw it off the turf. So nine seconds remain. And for Regis, this is, uh, you know, you got to take shots at the end zone here. I don't think you can really risk running the ball. That's going to pretty much spell the end of the half. Aces formation here for Regis. Tate out wide right, Andrews wide left. Weisenberger back to pass, rolling left, steps up. He wants to run with it. He's not going to get there. That's the end of the half. Well, Weisenberger uh, wanted to try to run. He thought he could get to the goal line. He could not. And the Ramblers are unable to manage the, t the uh, clock effectively there at the end of the half to try to get another score before halftime. But they will take an eight-point lead into the halftime locker room. 20-12, to 12, Ramblers lead the Warriors. Eau Claire Regis will receive the second-half opening kickoff, and that will be in just a bit. We'll take an extended break, come back, and uh, get you ready for the second half right after this with Regis up 20-12 to 12 over Nielsville granton right here on the Ramblers Sports Network. At Regis Catholic Schools. My name is Marianne Callahan and I have two children at Regis Middle School. I believe in our Catholic schools because they provide Um, and you can see that there's a lot of camaraderie and there's, a, again, a shared sense of uh, identity uh, here at Regis. I love the education my kids receive. I love that they get to practice their faith daily here and that it's in an environment that is just warm and inviting and they're safe and so comfortable here. Uh, our kids love being at Regis because they have a sense of camaraderie with other kids that also have a Catholic faith and a Catholic moral upbringing. The thing I love most about my school is the small class sizes that we have because that really offers us a chance to want to have more one-on-one -on -one time with our teachers if we need more help with subjects. The standards are higher and there are great expectations for our kids to achieve and the teachers do their best to help them do that. Our teachers really hold us accountable for all of our academics. They always make sure we're on track and they always make sure we're working to the best of our ability. And the teachers really care about your child and they will support them not only academically but spiritually and they really go out of their way to make a connection with your child. We are able to engage at every level of the human person every single day in every classroom and every subject and that's something that you can't put a price tag on. Well, God is at the heart of all that we do in everything. And I think what is so great about our schools is that we strive to find ways to serve the community each year in different ways. So even our littlest learners know how important it is to share God's love with their classmates, their families, and the community. Regis Catholic Schools is accessible to absolutely everyone with financial aid and tuition assistance. There is never any reason that somebody should not be able to go to Regis Catholic Schools. Regis as a family does really come together and support the people that want their kids to have a Catholic education uh, very well. They come together and provide all kinds of different types of assistance um, and so you simply just need to ask for help and be available to receive that assistance. It is so well worth it for us to sacrifice financially for our kids to come here because honestly we don't feel like it is a sacrifice. We feel like it is an investment in their future. 
But I try to give people the advice of don't look at it just from a financial perspective. Obviously, there's a lot of different options uh, financially, so that's really important. You know, really try to look at, you know, the type of education you want your kids to have. And our teachers are very dedicated to providing the best quality education for our students, and we're there to nurture them academically, but also spiritually, and help them establish a, a foundation that's really based on morals and setting them up for success in the future. I've witnessed the difference that Regis Catholic Schools make because of how content my kids are. They are just happy to be at school here because they're in a family environment where teachers are invested, parents are invested, and everybody wants what's best for them. Visit our website to schedule a tour. Learning today, leading tomorrow, Regis Catholic Schools.
And welcome back in here to Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Carson Park here, if you're tuning in tonight. Not a lot of games going on across uh, the state of Wisconsin in high school football, so we're happy to have you along with us for a big showdown in the Clover Belt. Eau Claire Regis versus Nielsville Granton, and we are at halftime. And as you see, it is Nielsville Granton trailing Regis 20 to 12. This has been a game of uh, emotional swings, I think you'd say, uh, throughout the course uh, of this uh, game. And, and as we take a quick look back, and what, happen, what has happened so far, uh, a lot of scores early on, right? Nielsville Granton, first drive, go down 2 minutes, 39 seconds. They go 71 yards and 8 plays. They got a Barth six-yard touchdown run, puts them up 6 to nothing with 9-16 remaining in the first quarter. Then Regis, a uh, very similar drive, 2 minutes, 49 seconds. They only had to go 47 yards on their first drive. And Ian Andrews, four-yard touchdown run and an extra point made it 7-6 to six Regis. And then the next drive, was a big one, a big turning point, a big pass through the air. Uh, got it to Braylon Boyer. Looked like he was going in for the score. Everett Tate from behind, right at the goal line, strips him of the ball. He could not recover the ball before it went out of the back of the end zone. Was a touchback. And then on the very next play with 3.40 left to go in that first quarter, uh, we saw Ian Andrews on a fake reverse play go 80 yards for the score and put Regis up 14-6. to Nielsville Grant would punt a few moments later, and uh, Regis, with 2.37 remaining in the first quarter, would start a drive that would last 4 minutes and 40 seconds into the second quarter, and they would score a touchdown on a Braden Albee two-yard touchdown run to make it 20-6. to then Nielsville Granton gets the ball back. They turn it over on downs, a failed punt. They had to fall on the ball back at their own 29-yard line. So, you know, Regis is up 20 to 6 at that point. It looks like it's all going right. You've got the ball at the 29-yard line of Nielsville Granton. Have a chance to go up by three scores. A couple plays later, a fumbled uh, pitch uh, from Owen Weisenberger trying to get it to Braden My or Brandon Meyer, rather. And uh, that gave the ball back to Nielsville Granton. And after that fumble, Nielsville Granton would go on uh, in two plays on a 55-yard touchdown pass from Erickson to Boyer to make it 20 to 12. They missed the two-point conversion. A couple of punts back and forth would get us to the end of the first half. Of course, Regis got close to scoring there at the end of the half, uh, but Owen Weisenberger tried to scramble with it with no timeouts left, couldn't get out of bounds, and that would end the first half. So that's kind of where we sit. I mean, Regis, I think, you know, they're up by eight. They feel, I'm sure, good about where they're at, but at the same time, I mean, this could have been a very different first half. You could have seen Regis up by three scores, maybe even more than that, uh, going into uh, the... Uh, second half, so or going into the second half. So uh, Nielsville Grand's got to feel pretty good about them hanging around uh, like they did. Now, Reed just going to get the ball here to start off this second half. Uh, but uh, they will uh, uh, certainly have, uh, uh, I would think, some momentum with them. But if Nielsville Grand gets an early stop, I mean, this becomes a really close, interesting game. Uh, down the stretch. It already is an interesting game, but it gets even more interesting if Nielsville Granton gets an early stop here in this second half. So that's kind of how things set up. Again, all the other action in the Clover Belt is tomorrow night. And again, uh, the big ones, Mondovi at Duran. That is certainly a uh, big one in the overall scheme of things is, uh, again, uh, you've got Durand and Stanley Boyd, both 3-2, and two, and then Regis, Nielsville, Granton, and Mondovi all at 4-1. and one. So, you know, Durand beats Mondovi, Regis beats Nielsville, Granton. All of a sudden, Regis, I, I, I think I said it uh, incorrectly earlier. I said there's a four-way tie. It's a three-way tie. My apologies. Regis, Nielsville, and Mondovi are all 4-1. and one. you got Durand and Stanley Boyd are 3-2. and two. So, I mean, Regis gets a win tonight, and then Duran upsets Mondovi. I mean, you could see a a win of the conference all on their own for Regis if they could win tonight again and then a win against Osseo next week. So it is not out of the realm of possibility. That is going to be the big one uh, we watch tomorrow. But Regis needs to take care of business tonight uh, here against Nielsville Granton. They are in good shape to do it. And Regis, interestingly enough here, is going to have the wind in their face of the third quarter, but they'll have the wind at their backs in the fourth quarter. I think that's always an advantage late in the game to have the wind at your back uh, in those situations. And so, I don't know, Nielsville Granton picking to go with the wind here in the third rather than the fourth. I'm a little bit surprised by that. I mean, maybe they want to, again, get back into this as quickly as possible, but Regis will have the wind at their back in the fourth, not in this quarter, as you see Regis moving left to right here in quarter number three. All right, ready for the start of this third quarter. Regis back to return the kick. That is Tate back there with Andrews. Is Casca the other one back? No, it's Haas, rather, who's back as well. 
We saw an onside kick attempt earlier in this game as well. We will not see it here. Reese McDonald kicks it downfield. It is scooped up by Haas at about the 16-yard line. Got a few blockers here to the 30. He's got a hole across the 40 and down near the 41-yard line before he's tackled by Sweeta along with Kreitlow, who had the uh, fumble recovery earlier tonight. And that will be where they start off. So at their own 41-yard line here for Regis. Again, it has been a long time since Nielsville Granton has defeated Regis. Ramblers beat the Warriors 56-13 to last year. They won 14 straight against Nielsville Granton since 2008. Inverted double wing will be the start here. Owen Weisenberger under center. Hard count. Get a man in motion early. It's a counter play to Alby. He is going to be taken down for a loss. Gang tackled there. The man at the bottom of the pile is Preston Berg. That'll be a loss of one, maybe two. Back to the 40-yard line. Berg was the guy who wrapped him up to start and then got a little help from the rest of his friends. Second and 11 coming up here for Regis. It is homecoming here as well, and uh, the court was announced here at halftime for Regis, and they, of course, want some the homecoming crowd home with a win here tonight. Second and 11. Here's the pitch from left to right they go. This is Tate fighting through some tackles. Erickson was holding on to the bottom of him. He's finished off up top by Berg after a gain of about four to the 44-yard line. Third and seven here for Regis with 11 minutes ticking left to play here in the third. And here is that early stop that we were talking about for Nielsville Grant. If they get this early stop, they got to feel really good about their chances moving forward. Third and seven, and it is the inverted double wing once again. Weisenberger under center. Hard count. Pitches to Koska. Koska looks for blockers, follows a couple, bounces out of one, and he's close to the first down right near the 50. In fact, I think that last surge might have gotten it. Now, the far side official is coming and marking him, I think, about a half a yard short. Casey Eckert also has him a half a yard short. And so fourth and inches on the plus side of the 50, but just barely. And now decision time, and I don't think it's too difficult of a decision, but it's going to be an interesting play, that's for sure. Here is Regis is going to go for it. 10-10 left to go in this third quarter. Fourth and inches. Weisenberger inverted double wing again. Under center he goes. It is a handoff to the tailback there in Andrews. It looks like he's got, pardon me, Tate rather. He had the forward progress up to the 48-yard line. And he's got enough for it. About a two-yard gain and a first down here for the Ramblers. Didn't get much, but he got enough. Nervy moment there for the Rambler fans. I talked about We talked about it. If you were with us early on in the uh, pregame show, I talked about it with Coach Brenner. I said, you know, all these close games you played, does this give you maybe more experience or more you know, you feel better maybe going into the playoffs than in years past where you've blown out teams? He said, I certainly hope it does because they've been a lot of close ones. Now Weisenberger back to pass, looking downfield here near side. He's got a man. It's Tate. Makes a catch at the 44, trying to make a move. Spins down to about the 39-yard line. He finally was wrestled down by Jace Peckle. And about an eight-yard gain, second and two here for Regis, just inside the 40-yard line. In fact, we'll call it second and one here for the Ramblers. Nice pass there, good idea. Again, they wanted the deep option. It wasn't there, but Tate was there here on the near side as sort of the safety valve for Weisenberger. Here comes the pitch to Koska. Got Weisenberger and friends in front of him. Gets some blocks to the 30. Trying to beat one man. He does to the 20. Still beating a man to the 15. Being pulled backwards. Pull him forward to the 5. Oh, my goodness, what a run. He stepped out of bounds. They'll say back of the 8-yard line. He got close to the goal line. It's a 31-yard scamper. Oh, buddy, what a run. That was impressive for Chase Koska. And it is first and goal from the 8-yard line. Boy, he just carrying guys you can't take him down by the jersey the jersey is not enough just finding out how much that kelly green can stretch first and goal here from the eight pitch goes to andrews andrews looking for his third touchdown of the game he'll spin away from a tackle down to about the four yard line he gets half of it and it is now second and goal from the four 
Ian Andrews, the ball carrier. Andrews with that gain. Again, he had an 80-yard touchdown run early. He's limping now a little bit on his way back to the sideline. Instead, it'll be Tate and Koska to come in as the wingbacks here for Regis. 8.17 to go in the third quarter. Second and goal from the four. Tate on the left wing, Koska on the right wing. That'll be the tailback. Inverted double wing, it goes. Weisenberger with a count, and he'll go to Tate. Tate trying to bounce it out on the right edge. He's got a blocker out there looking for the cut. There it is, to the end zone. Touchdown, Ramblers. Tate on the four-yard run, 7.58 left to go. Third quarter, 26-12, Ramblers with the extra point pending. Everett Tate rewarded for all the hard work he's done here tonight. And for Tate now this season, that is his fourth rushing touchdown. And the Ramblers, believer, no, they might be huddling up to go for two here. Ends up being about a four-minute drive. And sure enough, they will go for two on that far side, that far hash mark. It is a keeper here for Weisenberg. Up the gut he goes. A little trickery on the quarterback keeper, and the two is good. 28-12, Ramblers lead by two touchdowns and two two-point conversions. 7.58 remaining third quarter. Back after this here on the Ramblers Sports Network. Welcome back in here to Carson Park. That was a 59-yard drive for the Ramblers, and it took almost four minutes, three minutes and 57 and seconds to be exact. And Reed just goes in with a four-yard ever Tate touchdown run to make it now 28 to 12. Weisenberger on the keeper for two. And so now a 16-point lead. Still a two-possession game, and Nielsville Granton backs up against the wall here as Reed just runs up. Kickoff from Jack Schroeder goes uh, to the far sideline, and it will run out of bounds, roll out of bounds, rather, and up to the 35, it'll come. Here for a good starting field position for Nielsville Granton to start this drive. 7.58 remains. And I think we'll hear Pat Hammond tell us that the kick went out of bounds. Let's never take an opportunity not to hear Pat Hammond on the call. Ball kicked out of bounds. Do they like to move it back five yards? Oh, interesting. Okay. Don't see a lot of teams do that, but they're going to take, and I think because the wind is into Regis here, they're going to take the five yards and make them re-kick the ball here. So interesting now. Back to the 35. So this is like a college kickoff now here for Regis. You don't see that too often, but I think with that wind, Nielsville Granton's going to take their chances. They've got some good returners back there, right? And Schultz and Boyer. Some good speed in that receiving core, and they're the ones who return here for Nielsville Granton. Let's see if uh, Drax Schroeder can redeem himself here. And this is a kind of sidewinding kick. It'll be scooped up at the 25 yard line, bobbled by Schultz, and he is taken down at the 30. Well, that was a bad decision. And we'll. Uh, I mean, not that bad of a decision. Only uh, loses them four yards, but in the end, 31-yard line is where Nielsville Granton will start out. So a good job there by the Ramblers to contain that return. And now, I mean, it's all up to Nielsville Granton. I mean, they've shown that they can move the ball through the air and move it quickly. But they're going to have to do it at a pretty good pace here with 7.54 remaining. 
in this third quarter. And Regis, I mean, we've only seen one drive of the second half, but it was the Regis 59-yard touchdown drive that has taken up the majority of it. Erickson almost fumbles the ball, gets the handoff off, but nothing doing there as Preston Semling hit the ball carrier Barth right away. No gain on the play, second and 10. There's the Semling uh, crew liking what they see. Landon Semling, the uh, sophomore brother, is going to check in there as well. So two Semlings up on the defensive line. No gain here for Regis. See Erickson, he likes to go to the sideline. That's where he gets the play call coming in. And we've seen them spread it out. They've gone with Second five receiver sets, two receiver sets. This time it'll be a four receiver set. It'll put Barth to his left. From the near hash mark is second and 10. Barth goes in motion there. Back to pass, Erickson slings it over the middle, and that's a great catch at the 45-yard line. And into Regis territory goes Ashton Schultz. They'll mark him down right at the 50-yard line. 19-yard gain and a first down. And that's that old, I mean, that's a very, it's a, an advanced kind of play. You see the college teams do that a lot of time. They send the receivers out. The defense kind of goes around them, and they get that late cut, that late kind of uh, slant route, if you will from Schultz, and at that point, the defense has sagged back so far that it's an easy catch and an easy uh, gain, and that's exactly what he did for 19 yards. It's a nice play, nice play design for Mealsville Grant. Gavin Barth goes out wide to the left along with two other receivers, and two out to the right as well. Erickson back to pass, just a three-man rush, steps up, and he does not get away from the three-man pressure. Landon Semling on the sack, uh, about a two-yard loss. That was only a three-man rush from Regis. And they still get the sack. Wow. You do not see quarterbacks. And, you know, we've seen Bryce Erickson run the ball. He can run very well. You do not see quarterbacks like Erickson get sacked on just a three-man rush, especially when he's stepping up in the pocket like that. It was a great job by Landon Semling, the 5'11", 235-pound sophomore stepping up and just kind of grabbing him with one arm and ripping him down. Second and 12 here for Nielsville Granton, down 16, and time's starting to become a factor. Erickson steps up again, gets around the pressure initially, throws downfield, incomplete. He had a man, had two men actually, had Sweeta and Boyer, and he goes for Sweeta, who had to go down to make that catch. It was not a great throw on the run. Would not have been a first down, but would have been close, and now it's third and 12 here for Nielsville Granton. They need the 40-yard line of Regis for a first down. This time, a good time by Erickson getting out of the pocket and getting away from the pressure, but not enough to make that pass. And again, it's just, it's tough, right? No rain right now, but it's been a, a wet night, a lot of rain in that first half. I'm sure the ball is still pretty moist and the uh, field turf as well here. Third and 12, they will give it to Barth on an end around, and he is wrapped up and stopped for a massive loss in the backfield. Alby up top, and down below is, below is Alex Burdick on the stop, and that is a huge loss of 11 yards for Nielsville Granton, and it's fourth and forever, and they've got a punt. There's no other option on fourth and about, what, 23 here or so for the Warriors, and they've got the wind at their back, so that the positive on this punt, if they can punt it over the Regis returners, that's kind of the only positive they're going to be able to garner from this, but there's a good chance if it's not a good punt, the Regis is going to get real nice field position again. Sam Hayes to punt, stands at his own 22. This one a good snap. That's a pretty decent punt. Takes a Nielsville Grant and bounce, picked up at the 22-yard line. Here comes Tate to the near side. Trying to make a move at the 30. Oh, he got face mask there. There goes the flag. And he breaks some tackles to the 45. Far side, he goes to the 50. He's got a couple men to beat. Erickson slowed him down. Then he's tackled up to the 42, 43-yard line of Nielsville Granton. Question is whether it's a 5-yard or a 15-yard face mask. My guess is it's only going to be 5. And they should tack this on to the end of the run. And Regis will have great field position. At least I think you can tack it on to the end of the run. Casey Eckert chatting with Pat Hammond right now. Face mask, five yards, penalty decline, going to be a first down. Yeah, they can't tack it on apparently, uh, like you can in college ball or in the NFL. So 
They'll just uh, keep it at the 43-yard line here, Will Regis. So another one I think they could maybe change in uh, the high school game is uh, get rid of the five and the five-yard uh, face match. Just go back up to 15 like everybody else. But that's uh, another discussion for another time. As the ball will be placed at the Nielsville Granton 43-yard line. 4:36 remains here in the third quarter, and Regis in good shape. And now they want to go for the pass. Weisenberger over the middle, and he throws it behind his intended receiver in George Walterstorf. Well, Regis going for the uh, kill shot there, and the right idea, but again, just wasn't well executed enough. Now you could tell Weisenberger, he didn't want to throw it kind of leading him because that could have been thrown right near the safety and could have been an interception. So instead threw it behind where only his receiver could catch it. Unfortunately, this was not a uh, play that was close enough. So second and 10 from the Nielsville Granton 43 yard line back to the inverted double wing they go. Weisenberger pitches. This is Meyer up the gut. He's got a couple taken down at the 41 yard line by a mass of white jerseys. And it looks like the first man up at the bottom of the pile is Max Greatlow. He's been great uh, here today. Today, Greatlow came in with 36 total tackles, four for a loss, and one sack. Had a couple interceptions as well. Has a fumble recovery today, and has been all over the place on defense. Third and eight, and they're going to call it seven officially from the 41-yard line. This is a fake pitch. Now they hand it off to Elmy instead, countering left. He's going to get close to the first down here. Boy, fighting Way through some down, tackles up near the 34-yard line. Really nice job there by Elmy countering to the left That's side. Boyer Reese tackle. McDonald, Jason Boyer was there as well. And now this makes it a fourth and much more manageable, and I'd imagine in this situation that Brian Brenner is going to go for it. As the clock continues to tick here in the third quarter, Regis up by two scores and two extra point or two uh, two point conversions rather. The the so here we go. They need to get about a yard and a half or so is what they're looking for. 33 will get it done. Here's the pitch. Oh, it's a fumbled pitch, and he's not going to get it. Here is Tate. Tate could not handle the pitch there from Weisenberger. It'll be a loss of a couple, and this is a turnover to Nielsville Granton, and that is exactly what the doctor ordered here for the Warriors. So Nielsville Granton in good shape now at the ball at their own 38 yard line. And that is a little mini win for the team clad in white. And a little bobble there. The pitch just not right. And that's the one thing the inverted double wing, those pitches, all those handoffs, they've got to be perfect, right? If you get any kind of bobbles out, it just it just runs you your timing off a little bit and since everybody's so close to the line if you don't get that quick speed that quick burst you're in trouble four-man rush here on Erickson throws out to the right that ball is off the turf incomplete Schultz had to bobble it there he thought that he could maybe sell that to the official on the far side as an eight-yard gain instead it had skipped off the uh, green turf here at Carson Park and it's second and ten Well, Everett Tate with the only score in this second half so far, the four-yard touchdown run that has put Regis up 28-12 to here, 3.06. Nielsville Granton had to punt on their last drive. Now a second and 10. They have not had much success here in the second half throwing the ball. Erickson, though, with an empty backfield, three receivers right, two left. Second and 10. Four-man rush for Regis. Throws it over the middle, and it is incomplete. Just a little too far for Barth, his intended receiver, his running back. Pass you see the pressure in the backfield the there from Albion and friends. Right in the face of Erickson affected him enough. They've gone for that just kind of deep, you know, go yeah, route a few on times. The and the one that's kind of up the middle, up the seam, if you will. And they've been successful a couple times. But that one they're throwing to Barth, who's the running back, maybe doesn't have the speed of Schultz and Boyer that they've been trying to find on that play. And, again, maybe just let him a bit too far. You got, again, you got the wind at his back. Pressure in his face. It's just a really, really tough throw to make that deep downfield. Hoser goes out wide right. You've got Gavin Barth in the slot to the right. Two speedy receivers on the left. Low snap. Erickson goes near side. That's incomplete. He had to get rid of that ball really quickly. I mean, every Rambler defensive lineman was back in the business of Erickson. 
You see Kovacevic was there along with Albi and others. And once again, three straight incompletions, and Nielsville Grantons has to punt. Three minutes remain here in the third quarter. And not a lot of time. I mean, only 12 seconds have ticked off the clock on this drive. So you know, they didn't lose a lot of time on it, but still just no positive yardage for the Warriors. And again, they've got the wind at their back right now. It's time that they've got to take advantage of that here in this third quarter. Down by 16. It's a good snap and a very nice punt here. And this is going to burn him maybe. No, he takes it at about the 23-yard line. Nice move here from Haas initially, and then he's taken down at the 32, maybe the 33. Good open field tackle by Reese McDonald. I thought that ball was going over his head with the wind. But in the end, it ends up being a decent little return to the 32. And Regis has it at their own 32-yard line. 2.50 remaining. Two punts by Nielsville Granton in the second half. For Regis, a touchdown and a drive that ended on a turnover on downs. Weisenberger brings this Rambler squad back out there with the inverted double wing. Koska right, and I believe it is Andrews wide left. And this will be the pitch to Andrews, trying to find the near sideline. He's got a little bit of space. Across the 40, he's ridden out of bounds near the first down marker. Hopefully everybody's okay here on the near sideline. Still waiting for everybody to get up. And Andrews is up, but I believe the man who tackled him for Nielsville Granton is still down. And so there will be a stoppage here. They'll say he was out at the 40-yard line, about an 8-yard gain. You see standing there is Kreitlow trying to check on his teammate. They're going to have the trainers come over. Of course, the Regis trainers will take a look at him as well right up against it. Yeah, you can see here, you see the railing right at the bottom of your screen, just how close the sideline is to the uh, railing here as well. There's not a ton of sideline space on the near side here on the uh, bleachers. And so hopefully uh, Warrior player, we don't know who it is, is all right here on the near side. Here with 2.46 remaining in this third quarter, a 28-12 lead. Uh, for Regis. So, again, hard for us to tell what exactly is going on. We'll let you know once we uh, see any kind of updates here on the uh, Rambler sideline. Just a, another one where I don't think anybody, you know, banged into the wall, but there's just not a lot of space where the benches are, where the equipment is, and where the players are as well on the near side. That's one of the things. It's just kind of a that intimate environment that you have here at Carson Park. And so just rode right up on the sideline, and hopefully everybody is, uh, is okay. So, again, uh, the way that this is all setting up, as we just recap for you, again, coming into the night, Nielsville, Granton, and Regis part of a three-way tie at the top of the Cloverbelt Conference. Mondovi also there as well at 4-1. and one. There's a man getting up in Jace Peckle. They'd taken his helmet off. <laughs> he's asking, he's saying, where did my helmet go? And uh, I think one of his coaches had taken it to the far sideline. He seems to be walking off just fine. Doesn't look like he has any discernible limp, just a... Probably a hard ride down there on the near side. So eight-yard gain. But, again, Mondovi tomorrow night will be at Durand, and I think that's uh, that's the big one you're watching for. I mean, that's going to be – that's a rivalry game already with the, the distance between those two schools. But it's also a, a game that could potentially – if Regis can hold on tonight, I mean, could potentially give Regis a chance to win the Clover Belt outright. If Mondovi loses tomorrow to Duran, that's a tough task, certainly, but Duran is a very solid team. Here's a fake pitch there to Andrews. He'll roll to his left. Will Weisenberger steps up, throws. He's got a man. Caught into Nielsville Granton territory and down the far sideline across the 35. Out near the 30 yard line, they'll mark him at the 32. And that is a gain of 28 yards. And that is Everett, uh, pardon me, not Everett Tate, rather. That was uh, George Walterstorff on the catch. And it's a first down for the Ramblers. As they move into Nielsville, Granton territory with 2.36 remaining here in the third quarter. 28-12, Ramblers lead it. And one more score, and the Warriors are going to be in, uh, in some deep trouble if they're down by three scores. Here's Koska on the pitch right to left. He's got a big hole left side. He just bowls into the defender. Ten-yard gain. First down as he takes Sweeta for a ride for a couple of yards. And it's a first down for the Ramblers up to the 22. First 
and ten for the Ramblers at the Regis in good shape here as they move to the 22 yard line. Again, they were leading just 20 to 12 at halftime. Now leading 28 to 12. In good shape here as we tick under two minutes left to go in the third. Casca again right to left. Gets hit hard across the 20 to the 18. Gets, I mean, four yards, but he got ridden hard. Now Erickson got rolled up on here. Boy, that could be a big issue for Nielsville Granton. He went and is rolling down there, kind of grabbing at his legs. And he's got his helmet off, and he is in a lot of pain, and that is just not what you want to see. Nobody wants to see. I mean, that's your starting quarterback there, and Obviously, Nielsville Granton, things are going kind of south for him a little bit here to begin with. But you certainly do not want your you're likely the, the first team all conference quarterback here in the Clover Belt going down, and he is in some pain. And uh, we'll let you know if he gets off under his own uh, power here. 143 left to go in the third quarter. And again, second and six about to come up here for Regis. 28 12, Ramblers with the lead next week, 7 o'clock Thursday night against Osseo Fairchild. That'll be the final regular season game for Regis. They've already qualified for the playoffs. A question of who they'll play, where they'll play them. That's all uh, part of it. As Erickson will walk off under his own power here. You see him just uh, in the corner of your screen joining the huddle and trying to uh, walk it off. So, uh, again, luckily for him, doesn't look to be anything terribly serious there, but he'll he's going to take a play or two off on the defensive side so he can be ready when uh, the offense comes back out. So here we go, second and six second now six here for Regis. At the Warrior 23. 143 remains in the third, and the Ramblers are in good shape. Inverted double wing again. It's the pitch to Andrews. Andrews goes up the gut and does not and find Andrews any space. Area. Didn't quite follow the blockers. think he thought he saw a hole there, and... Ends up being taken down by Reese McDonald. Gets maybe one. And a third and five about to come up here for the Warrior, or for uh, Regis, rather. There's calling it third and four on the board, but it looks close to third and five to me. It's the 17, and they need to get to about the 12 for a first down. Third and four for the Ramblers. As we tick under a minute left to play here in the third quarter. Weisenberger with a hard count, pitches to Casca. They'll give it on a reverse. Reverse here to Andrews, to the near side of the 15-10. Pardon me, it's Tate. He's into the end zone. Touchdown, Ramblers. Everett Tate with the score. A 21-yard, or pardon me, a 17-yard uh, run for Everett Tate. And Eau Claire Regis is into the end zone again. It's 34-12, Ramblers lead. And they will, I believe, attempt the extra point. And that is the case. And they're going to bring on the new, uh, a different kicker, their second kicker, Jack basically, in Jack Schroeder. Owen Weisenberger holding. Tate with his second touchdown run of the contest. Snap spot and a whistle. I think this might be offside. Encroachment on the defense. Half the goal. Yeah, they're going to call this a, uh, offside, and that's an automatic dead ball. So now they're going to go for two, I'd imagine, as this will put Regis just a yard and a half away from a two-point conversion. So Tate with the 17-yard touchdown run. And Regis is uh, in the driver's seat. The two-yard line, the Ramblers going for two. Market at about the one and a half or so. Ramblers will indeed go for two. Weisenberger back out. Got Meyer on the left, Casca on the right. And it's a pitch to Casca, cuts it up, and he is in for the two-point conversion. Nielsville Grand, you can see hanging the heads, a little bit of negative body language as Regis is now up 24 points here on the Warriors. Back after this on the Rambler Sports Network.
welcome back in here to Carson Park. This will be part of the uh, playlist, I'm sure, for Zane Cullinan. It'll be uh, uh, not only our video director, but it'll be DJ at the uh, homecoming dance tomorrow night, I'm told, here for uh, Eau Claire Regis homecoming weekend. And uh, happy to have you along. Homecoming for UW-Eau Claire as well. I'll be taking on uh, River Falls ranked team uh, on Saturday, so that should be a lot of fun. Another big game here tomorrow night, Eau Claire North hosting New Richmond as well. So a lot of uh, excitement here at Carson Park, the football stadium. And it's been excitement for Regis tonight. They lead 36-12 to now, short kick. And this will be scooped up, and boy, nothing on the return. I think Schultz, Schultz and Boyer maybe had a reverse set up there, but with that ball being kicked short, Schultz really couldn't do much with it. Now Schultz, you can see, is kind of limping back here. Looks like he's in some pain as well. Looking at that left ankle, left shin area. And so now, well, Nielsville Granton, I mean, it's got to be scores, and they got to be quick. Now, this is a team that is built to score quick, and now that the wind is not quite as bad as it was earlier, no rain in this second half, you'd think that this would be the time. Here at their own 29-yard line and 43 seconds remaining So in this uh, third quarter. So, I mean, if, if there's no time like the present for Bryce Erickson. He's got to... Get this ball downfield, get some uh, completions, and try to get his Warrior team back into it. Down by three scores. It's a low snap. has got to go down and get it. He can run here to the 30, and he'll slide down to the 35, and that was uh, dangerous to be a 15-yard penalty as Colton Rocco went for him and luckily didn't make any contact. Yeah, He'll officially get the uh, tackle there, but a six-yard gain for Erickson on the scramble. And Nielsville Grant will try to get one more playoff before the end of the quarter. 20 seconds remaining in it. Let's see if they try to get a playoff. They got, let's see, 11 seconds remaining. It looks like they're going to try to make one more snap. They need to. Down by three scores. Snap is taken in time. It's a keeper here for Erickson. Makes a move, breaks a tackle, and he gets a first down to the 40-yard line on a five-yard gain. So, Two runs for Erickson get the Warriors a first down at the end of the third quarter. They'll have it at the uh, their own 41-yard line when we come back with the start of the fourth quarter. That's coming up right after this here on the Ramblers Sports Network. Welcome back in here as we get set for the start of the fourth quarter between Regis and Nielsville Granton. And as you see, it's a 24 point lead for Regis, 36 to 12. And uh, they've got the ball with a, uh, or I should say, Nielsville Granton has the ball with a first down. But they're going into the wind now here in this fourth quarter. The wind has cool, calmed down a little bit as Erickson fakes a handoff back to pass. A little float pass there over the top. Catch made at the 50 and a couple more yards for the uh, back there in Andrew Hoser. And I think there we're going to get another flag or a flag coming in here late. There was a little extracurricular over there on the sideline. Nielsville Granton sideline wants a flag. I don't think they're going to get it. But a little pop pass there of uh, 13 yards gets a gain for Nielsville Granton. And like I said before, I mean, they've got the offense that's built for a comeback. I mean, they need a lot to go right down by 24. But, I mean, they can score as quickly as anybody. We've seen it earlier tonight on a two-play 58-yard drive, 55-yard pass. Erickson uh, earlier tonight. Erickson now steps up and he's sacked. Sacked back at the 49 yard line. Alby came in there along with Semling. That's Landon Semling on the tackle. Couple yard loss, second and 12. And once again, Erickson sacked. And you remember he came up a little bit hurt on the defensive side of the ball in that last drive. So, you know, you got to watch for that every time he's tackled. He does not seem to have that. Uh, that giddy-up that you're used to seeing from him. 
He has had to uh, fight through a lot of hard hits, tackles. This Regis team has come for him tonight on the defensive side of the ball. Splitting out wide right is Schultz, and the slot is Boyer. And he'll go back to pass Will Erickson, throws it over the middle. Boyer off the fingertips, incomplete. Only would have been about a four or five yard gain if he made that grab. You can see Casca was closest. Incomplete third and 12. And he can throw that ball with some velocity. It's been a few times tonight where he's thrown, and I thought, man, that thing comes out of there quick. And it's just hard for the receivers to hold on to that ball sometimes, especially now. I mean, it's colder than they're used to it being, right? We've. Not really had a, a, a weekend that's been in down in the 50s. I think really all season long. I can't remember any cold weather games yet this year. Third and 12 now from the Regis 49. Erickson trying to roll right. Gets away from the pressure. Throws it downfield. It is up and caught, but a big hit. Put on Boyer by Koska, but he holds on for the catch to the 32. That's a 17-yard gain and a first down for the Warriors. He paid the price, though, as Koska lowered the boom here on the near side. To the 32 they go, though, and on the clock ticking. But, again, Nielsville Grand, they need to score quickly and then get the ball back as quickly as possible. I mean, they may need a turnover or two from... Regis in this fourth quarter as well if they want a chance to come back and win here. Come back and at least make this a game. 36 to 12 as you see and it's again Erickson back in the shotgun looks left now over the middle got the pass the catch made and Sweet had taken down from behind. I believe the tackle there was Preston Olsen that'll be about a five yard gain to the 20. I'm going to call it a four yard gain to the 28. Second and six now here for Nielsville Grant. As we tick down, almost under 10 minutes left to go. Second and six. Call it second and five on the board, but only a four yard gain there. So second and second six. And six for the Warriors at the Rambler 28. Erickson need to take a shot here at some point. They need to score quickly. He's looking left. He's going to go out of the backfield, and it's incomplete. That was not the best of throws for Gunnar Barth. There's Gunnar Barth had a hard time trying to make that Barth. catch. Still should have made it, but again, it was thrown a little bit behind him and set out in front of him. And now third and six here from the Regis 28. See if the Ramblers bring a little bit of pressure here. You imagine that Erickson's going to be throwing. And they'll go Third empty backfield here as well, Third interestingly enough. Third and six. Regis will bring some heat. Five-man rush. Erickson gets hit. That was not a face mask. Oh, they're going to call it here. That looked like he grabbed him by the shoulder pad. I wonder if Pat Hammond's going to talk to his officiating crew because Pat did not throw the flag, but it was two other guys who were further away. I think Pat Hammond saw that pretty well, and I think they're going to wave this off. Let's let's hear the call. Whoa, okay. I thought he grabbed him by the uh, by the shoulder and not the face mask, but apparently there was a face mask in there, and that is a 15-yard personal foul penalty from the spot of the foul, not from the line of scrimmage. Well, again, Regis brought the heat, and they almost, I mean, they did get there. It was just a matter of where they grabbed him, and sure enough, 15 yards, and so this will put it up to the 20-yard line from the spot of the foul. So first down for Nielsville Granton. Now why they haven't moved the chains yet, I have no idea. After the penalty it's not an automatic first down in high school, but they've got the first down yardage. I think they're talking right now, why wasn't it from the original line of scrimmage? Which I thought they had changed that in high school football for this year, but I guess I could be wrong. Somebody left a... Uh, Mouth guard, I believe, uh, back at the 40-yard line, or at least some piece of equipment. So officials are talking this over. I think, if, if I remember correctly, I believe there has been a rule change where you mark that off from the previous line of scrimmage, which is, you know, the case in college ball, it's the case in the NFL. Why high school would mark it off from the spot doesn't make a whole lot of sense still, but especially when it's behind the line like that. And I think that's what the conversation is here. Let's see if Pat Hammond will give us an explanation. This should be fun. What we, what we said before was correct. 15 yards, going to be a first down. Very good. I think most of the things Pat Hammond says is correct, or at least are correct. So there you are. 
That was the conversation, I think, whether they're marking it off from the spot of the foul or from the original line. But uh, they are all set and ready to go. Here's a handoff. Barth, oh, he shed a tackler beautifully there at the 20, and then he gets a little bit of a rugby scrum push up to the 18-yard line. He made something out of nothing there. That should have been a two, three-yard loss. And he literally just threw a tackler aside, got to the 18 for a two-yard gain, second and eight here. But now, you know, the clock's a problem now here for the Warriors. They're down three touchdowns and three two-point conversions. Uh, the little gains aren't going to do it, and I'm a little surprised that they haven't taken some shots. You've got some really good receivers. you got the best quarterback in the clover belt. A guy who came in to the game is thrown for 1,200 yards in six games, or seven games, rather. you got to take a shot to the end zone here pretty quick as we are under nine minutes left to play. Back to pass he goes. Pressure coming, rolling right. Erickson, he gets rid of it to Barth. Barth to the 15, and it's fumbled from behind, but it goes out of bounds. Believe this will be brought back to the spot of the fumble. It goes out of the five. He fumbled it at about the, what, nine-yard line or so, or will they keep it at the five-yard line? I think they will keep it at the five. So this is a first down here for Nielsville granton And... First and goal here for the Warriors. We've had some interesting rules uh, pop up here in the last couple of minutes in this game. But uh, another fumble from behind. Remember, that was something similar to what we saw earlier tonight when Everett Tate forced a fumble on a, a catch from Braylon Boyer right at the goal line. The ball went out of the back of the end zone for a touchback instead of a, what should have been an easy touchdown. And... Ended up resulting in a play. The next play, Regis went in from 80 yards out for the touchdown. Once again, Erickson, he throws this one short for Barth, incomplete. 8.31, clock stops. Left here in the Barth. ball game, and then now at 8.31 left, Warriors have second and goal coming up and just kind of looking for answers. It seems a little bit, you know, there's not really a sense of urgency here from Nielsville Grant. And I thought on that last touchdown that Regis had, it felt a little bit like Nielsville Granton Grant was kind of waving the white flag. And it just seemed like Second negative body language and whatnot. You still kind of feel that on this drive, even though they've been positive. Just has not felt like they've had that little killer instinct here on uh, this drive. Here's back to pass Erickson to the corner of the end zone. Up and incomplete tight coverage there from Noah Taras. And you see the Nielsville Granton sideline wants a pass interference call on that pass to Schultz. They won't get it. I mean, he was all up in his business. And now third and goal from the five. Noah Taras also defending. Third down. <laughs> Joe Roach on the PA tonight. Always does a great job. 8.26 now remains. Clock stopped on that incompletion. So still plenty of time here. Or, no, or I guess no reason to worry about time at the moment. With that clock stop. But they need the touchdown. They need this drive to result in the touchdown. Nothing else will uh, do. Erickson passes near side. Catch made at the six. Trying for the end zone. He's taken down just short as Boyer. And he will be out of bounds. Let's see Casey Eckert's coming in at the two-yard line to mark him out. It's about a three-yard gain, and now this is basically the ball game. If Nielsville Granton doesn't get it here, you can put an end to it for sure. I mean, Regis is well within the driver's seat. It takes a lot for the Warriors to win this one, even if they score a touchdown here. But I think it is ball game over if Nielsville Granton doesn't get in on this play. It's out of bounds. 8-19 left to go here in the four, so clock still stopped. Now the game on the line here for the Warriors and their chance to try to get at least a share of the Clover Belt with a win tonight. Under center, pitch to Barth. Barth has it in the open field. He stopped and wrapped up back at the three. Ball comes out. He was down, though. And a play that it just looked like Nielsville Granton didn't really buy into that play. They went with a pitch to Barth, and he was stopped immediately. And the Ramblers take it over. That was a over four-minute drive. Results in a turnover on downs. And Regis with the first full drive of this fourth quarter. They can milk the clock here now up by 24 with 8.15 left to play. Long way to go, starting at their own three. First and 10 for the Ramblers at their four. 
Call up the four-yard line, 4-3. Four, 3-4 three. Three, right in between that is where they're at. Weisenberger under center. Here's a pitch to Andrews around the right edge. Has some space out to the edge, to the 10. Now that's going to come back, though, on a flag. This looks like a hold around the edge. And so we're looking at a half the distance of the goal situation here. Andrews with a good run around the edge, but they say there was a hold, and Gavin Pat Ball Hammond will inform us. Got a hold. All right, on the offense, half the distance to the goal. Repeat, first down. Indeed, we do have a hold, and so it'll go back to the two-yard line here. So it'll be first, and I mean, not a huge penalty, but. It does wipe off a pretty good gain and what would have been a first down for Ian Andrews After on that far side. Andrews did limp two. off a bit there as well. I believe Tate is the left wing here for Weisenberger. He'll pitch it to the right wing and um, not much on that play. Erickson on the tackle. Was that Koska? Everett Tate, the ball carrier. Pardon me, that was Everett Tate on that right edge. And so Tate gets maybe back to the original Ashton line, Schultz second and ten. Tackle along with Austin Gross and Bryce Erickson on the stop. Koska going to come back in Eight with Tate. So Koska looks like he'll be the right wing back, and Tate the left second wing back here in the inverted the double wing. Now be the tailback. Under center he goes. Hard count from Weisenberger. He will roll to his right, wants to throw this one. Oh, and he gets crushed. He tries to get rid of it, won't matter. It's a safety. Maybe that's a little bit of momentum here for this Steelsville Grant team. And there is the quarterback, Erickson, making the sack on Weisenberger for the safety. So now 36 to 14, Ramblers lead. Erickson on the tackle for Nielsville. Erickson with the sack. And we look at a 36 to 14 ball game now here in favor of Regis. So a free kick coming up for the Ramblers back at the 20. And so at least a little bit of life here. So and the Warriors will get the ball back at least. And should have pretty good field position. Again, you'll have Regis kicking with the wind uh, here in the fourth quarter. But still 7.23 left, a lot of time excuse me, left in this game, and now you get that two-pointer there, so now 22 points, so you're looking at, I mean, you still need to get three touchdowns if you're Nielsville Grant, and they do not kick extra points, but you know now you got a little bit of wiggle room here. If you miss or you don't convert on one of those two-point conversions on your way back, you uh, isn't the end of the world. You don't you don't have uh, no room for error, if it, uh, if you will. So, will kick off so again, labor to kick. Schultz and Boyer back, so Labor now getting the uh, duties Boyer, after Jack, Jack Schroeder Nielsen. had a couple of miscues on his kickoffs. But Nielsville Grant in pretty good shape here. Let's see Labor's kick. Now it's a pretty good one. Taken at the 37. This time by Schultz. Schultz trying to make a move near the 50, and he's ridden out of bounds right at the 50 yard line. Ashton Schultz on the return. And so it looks like the 50 yard line is exactly where Nielsville Granton will start off the drive. 7.17 left. I mean, again, the positive, too, when you when you run the kind of offense that they do in high school football, I mean, you get some incompletions, it's going to stop the clock. So, I mean, there's not a lot of time has run off here in the last few moments. And it feels like this fourth quarter kind of going on forever at the moment. And a 22-point lead, still a lot, but a couple of quick strikes and a couple of good stops from Nielsville Granton. And again, I'm telling you, this is not out of the realm of possibility. Reed just got to be really smart here on defense, to keep everything in front of you. Two receivers left, two right here for the Warriors. Erickson back to pass, throws it out near side. That is incomplete off the turf. Aston Schultz was saying that he got his arms under it, but Casey Eckert was right there. It says no dice. Now, Incomplete second and ten. Second and ten for the Warriors in midfield. Looks like they'll go with the four receiver set again. 
Schultz and Boyer out to the left. Erickson takes the snap, looks left the entire way. Now wants to step up, trying to get away from the pressure. Throws across his body dangerously. Oh, and then the suplex there after a six-yard gain. Sweeto with the catch. And showing off his best wrestling moves there, Colton Morocco with the belly-to-back suplex there. Gain of six. Doing his best Brock Lesnar impersonation, and it's now third and four. Third and four for the Warriors at the Rambo 44. That was impressive strength, just like his brother Xander, certainly. That was uh, something to watch. All right, third and four. I mean, you see the Nielsville Grant and sideline wants a, a personal foul penalty on that. They're reenacting it over there on the sideline and not getting any uh, play from the officials. Erickson, near side, catch made by Schultz. Schultz has a blocker, and he's going to go down quickly there. Not really sure. Unless, that's got to be an injury, right? I mean, I don't know why he went down like that. He's coming up limping. He gets maybe two yards on the play, and that will bring up fourth and two. And once again, Nielsville Grant has their backs up against the wall. And I mean, the clock not their friend here either. Down by three touchdowns. And they, uh, again, are in another do-or-die situation. Into the back judge here, no count yet, so they've got plenty of time to get this playoff, but they need to get it off quickly here as they're in a lot of clock here to get this play. Erickson with the run to the right. He's got the first down and more. Oh, and then he lost his footing here at the 36. And again, that's that wet field turf that kind of came up and bit him. He gets six yards on the play. Could have had more. But that wet turf with all the rain that we had earlier tonight hurts him there to uh, not get any more. But he does get the first down, converts the fourth down. 36 to 14, Ramblers lead it. New set of downs, but again, Nielsville Granton is running up against the clock at the moment. Erickson in the shotgun, two receivers left, two right. Over the middle he looks, he rolls to his left, little shovel pass to Barth. Gets hit pretty hard on the back end of that play, and Barth gets near the first down marker. He's about a yard short. It was Albie who knocked him down. He kind of finished the tackle. He hit him. Timing-wise was fine, but it was that extra finish there. And again, Nielsville Granton on the sideline. They're begging for a penalty, and they're not getting it. They wanted roughing the passer. And again, if anything, it's going to be for the follow-through, right? Not for the actual hit. The hit... Timing-wise was fine. It was the, more of the driving into the ground motion that they wanted the call for, but didn't get it. Second and one. Second and one for the Warriors at the Rambler. Fox still ticking. 36-14 Ramblers. Erickson in the shotgun again. Two receivers left, two right. Goes over the middle, caught on a slant route. Boyer near side 20, trying to make a move. The 15 does to the 10, near sideline down at the 7. 20-yard pass. That was exactly what Nielsville Granton needed in that situation. A really nice move by Braylon Boyer. Again, he's got seven receiving touchdowns this season, including one tonight, one per game on average. The Warriors need a quick score. Under four we go. Looks left the entire way, a little fade route for Schultz, and it is up and in completely over. Cook that one with Andrews in coverage. Incomplete second and goal from the seven. Third and pass intended for Ashton Schultz. Ian Andrews depending on the player. Well, clear Regis defense came into this game. With 10 sacks on the year, Second they've had three tonight. The at the seven. And they only allow 100 yards through the air per game, and they've done a really good job shutting down one of, if not the best passing attack in all of the Clover Belt. Erickson pumps, steps up, loses the ball for a moment. Now he's going to tuck it, and he will throw with his left hand to the end zone. Did he stay behind the line? He did. Touchdown. What a throw from Erickson. My goodness. He switched it to his left hand and got it to Boyer, the ambidextrous quarterback. Whoa, buddy. This is your best Aaron Rodgers impersonation right there. That was, I mean, how many quarterbacks in high school can switch it to the left hand and still throw I mean, he threw that a good 10 yards and pretty accurate to Boyer as well. Wow, what a play. 
not, I'm not sure the fans even picked up on what happened there. That was that's you're going to put that on the highlight reel if you're Bryce Erickson. Holy cow! Got to go for two, and now a whistle and a false start here on the near sideline. Got a false start, five yards. Drive ends up taking a little under four minutes. And so that part of the issue right now, they just took too much time off the clock. But 36-20, two-pointer here makes it a 14-point game. It'll be a little tougher now here from the eight-yard line. Oh, and they got a pass play here set up back corner, and it's overthrown. Handed it off to Hosier, and he could not complete it back to Schultz in the back corner of the end zone. So it is a 16-point game, though still. It's still a two-point, uh, two-possession game, rather. And we'll have the kickoff coming up for you right after this with 3.39 left in the fourth here on the Rambler Sports Network. in here to Carson Park 339 remains 36 to 20 Regis with the lead on Nielsville Granton they're going to set up for the onside kick they need the ball back as quickly as possible both teams have all three timeouts so remaining as you see looks like they're going to kick this to the far side on a short field and oh they got a chance at it Regis didn't get the initial recovery but I believe the man behind did let's see who came up with it there I think that was Alby who recovered it. Yeah, and that was the case. It was, that was a really nice onside kick. And I'll tell you what, Nielsville Granton was inches away from potentially getting that recovery. The first man up for Regis missed it. And then Alby was there to clean it up behind. So first off we go. The Ramblers at their own 49. 3.38 remaining. And so. Imagine they'll keep it on the ground. Nielsville Grant will start to use some timeouts to conserve some clock. Down by two scores. Pitch goes to Casca. Casca gets a few to the 30, or pardon me, the 46 yard line, four yard gain. Timeout, Nielsville Granton. And they'll stop the clock at 332 left. So, I mean, this is it pretty much. I mean, Regis. They get a first down here. I mean, depending on when they get it, maybe need one more to ice the clock, ice the game rather. So, I mean, Two first downs, likely that's it. Uh, one potentially gets you the uh, game, but uh, it's going to be close. So right now, Regis is uh, in run this game out mode at the moment. And uh, the Warriors have put up one heck of a fight here today. They look good early. Remember, they took the early lead 6 nothing, first drive of the game. 71-yard touchdown drive. Gunnar Barth ran it in from six yards out. But Regis answered. Just a few minutes later with a 47-yard drive and an Ian Andrews four-yard touchdown run to make it 7-6. to six. They haven't looked back. They scored again on an Ian Andrews 80-yard touchdown run after that ball was fumbled out of the back of the end zone right near the goal line uh, by Braylon Boyer. And then took it in for an 80-yard touchdown run. A play later did the Ramblers 14-6. to six. They added another touchdown at the uh, beginning of the second quarter from Alby from two yards out. They had a 20 to 12 lead second as Nielsville Granton scored Ramblers a touchdown late. Or I should say middle of that second quarter. 20 to 12 lead going into halftime. Here's the pitch from right to left around the edge. Koska, there he goes to the 30. Got a man to beat and he couldn't make the move, but he's taken down inbounds, I believe, at the 21 yard line by Jace Peckle. 324 remaining. We'll see if Casey Eckert's gonna tell him to wind the clock here or not. 
I don't think he is. They said that he got tackled out of bounds. I thought he might have stayed in bounds, but not the case. So 324 remains. The clock stays stopped there as Casca was taken out of bounds. Play, first and 10 for the Ramblers at the Warrior 21. But now the Ramblers are close to throwing up another score here to put it certainly out of reach. Let's see if they uh, get close to that point. Here's Casca again from right to left. Look at him dragging a tackler Casca, with him up to the 15-yard line. Behind there, that was Austin Gross, and he just Caden shows that, uh, that great kind of weight room uh, acumen there and just kind of pulls the defender with him, and now no timeout being taken by Nielsville Granton here after a six-yard gain, second and four, as we tick under three minutes left to play. So now all eyes on the back judge. You can see him at the top left corner of your screen. He'll put his arm in the air when there's 10 seconds left in the play clock, and then he'll count down the last five seconds. Second and four for the Ramblers at the 15. So Owen Weisenberger will just watch him for uh, kind of his cue on when to snap the ball. Uh, he's going to snap it early, though. He never put his arm in the air. As now they'll hand it off on a counter to Tate. Tate's got the first down to the nine. We'll stop the clock momentarily to set down the chains. And now Pat Hammond will tell him to wind it. A little surprise there. Weisenberger, though, I thought he'd wait until the uh, back judge started the countdown and uh, didn't seem to care to do that. Let's see if he takes some more time this time. No hurry here for the Ramblers. Still two timeouts for the Warriors, but... I think they're riding kind of on the wall right now for Nielsville Grant. I mean, they've had a great season, don't get me wrong. But Regis has, I mean, had a big week last night with that 14-point win over Stanley Boyd. And tonight they are showing their dominance, especially on the ground here as Koska gets this inside the five-yard line. It'll be second and goal from about the four, maybe the three. Four-yard line is where they'll put him. And I don't think Nielsville Granton's really in any uh, hurry here to take a timeout. So Regis could potentially just uh, take a Second knee or two and have this game be over. Weisenberger, hard count. Pitch will go to Meyer, and he's got the touchdown. And an exclamation point here for the Ramblers as Meyer and runs Meyer it in with 122 touchdown. left to play. It's 42 to 20, Regis. For Meyer, that is his first touchdown of the season. So that's a nice moment for him. We'll see Schroeder now back out there as the place kicker to uh, try to make it a 43 20 game. And the kick is up, and it is good. And Eau Claire and Regis leads 43-21, to 21, 22 left. Back right after this here on the Rambler Sports Network. And hey, a special thanks to all those boosters and sponsors who make these broadcasts and make Regis Athletics happen. And uh, boy, what uh, great support that this uh, Rambler team has in the Eau Claire community and uh, throughout the Chippewa Valley. And uh, it's been great to call these games all season. We got one more next week and uh, then the playoffs. And again, a win tonight and a win next week. Regis, I think, ensures at least one home game in the playoffs, if not a second. They got a chance, I think, at a second playoff game as well. Seven and two is, is kind of in that realm where you know you're going to get one, but you're not sure about a second one. And so here comes a return on that kind of squib kick. Brilliant Boyer player, takes it out to the 30-yard line. 118 Jay remaining. Foster Ramblers just too much for Nielsville Granton tonight. And remember, I mean, Nielsville Granton, you know, they defeated Mondovi. That was a team that got Regis a couple weeks ago here at Carson Park. And this Rambler team, I mean, they're beat up. We talked about it. They've got a few guys out, Shula Hurt and others. But 
even with a few of their uh, key players in different areas out, uh, they have been up to the task. Basically, they're two tight ends, right? They're starting tight ends, and Shula and Webster out tonight. So Tyler Galing and George Walterstorff stepped in on that ends of that inverted double wing up on the line, and they did a great job. And there's a late substitution here as Erickson gets his uh, backup running back, I believe that is uh, Marcus Lutcherhand, into the game. Off on the left side it goes, and a good, decent uh, pickup here up to the 42-yard line as they uh, move the ball to start with 111 left to play. Pass complete to Ashton Schultz. Schultz gets the reception. 12-yard gain here to start off the drive. Did get out of bounds, so stop the clock with 111 left. And the Warriors do have two timeouts left, but again, the uh, riding on the wall at the moment with a 23 Regis lead, 23 point Regis lead here on Nielsville Grant. It's a few years ago, it was a close game at, in Nielsville. That was, uh, I believe, the COVID year, right after the COVID year. Uh, when they played there is a catch made out here on the edge and this is Lutcherhand making a couple moves into Regis territory up to the 40 yard line this will be an 18 yard gain Erickson somebody back behind the player talking to Pat Hammond I don't know really what they're doing this far back was there a flag back there I don't think there was clock stopped and now they will wind the clock well, there's a conversation going behind it. It was uh, Max Kreitlow who was, I don't know what he was arguing for with Pat Hammond, but he had a long Coach conversation. With him. It's not the time to do it. As the clock continues to run. Again, Nielsville Grant not going to call a timeout here. Down by 23. Erickson back to pass. Going to step up, wanted to launch it, now throws it over the middle, caught at the 20, spin move at the 15, and taken down inside the 15 goes Andrew Hoser. Hazer, excuse me, Austin makes it to the 13-yard line. What a 27-yard gain. And Erickson has a chance to put another touchdown on the board. Let's see if Regis can step up. A couple of the second-teamers in right here. Erickson back to pass, looks out left. That ball is caught, but hit immediately there at the five-yard line is Ashton Schultz. They will blow a whistle. I think we have a timeout. Yeah, timeout taken. By Nielsville Granton with 15 seconds left. So they want to try to get him one more time here and add a little bit of points to the uh, tally line. And that's what they'll do. So timeout taken again tomorrow night. Mondovi at Durand in a rivalry matchup down at uh, Durand. That should be a good one. And if Regis can get lucky and have Durand win that game. They would be one win away against Osseo Fairchild next week from somehow figuring out a way to win the Clover Belt. And they only have one loss in conference. That was to the Buffaloes. Now, again, even if Mondovi, let's say they win tomorrow night and then they win at home against Fall Creek the last week, it's still a share, right? I mean, this is not a – I'm sure Mondovi will claim, right, that they beat Regis head-to-head -head and that they should uh, be the official champions, but that's not how it works. It would be a, officially a share of the Clover Belt. Uh, they'd have the bragging rights, if you will, this year, but nothing official other than, uh, I guess, whatever you want to put up on a poster or put up on a banner or whatever you want to do. So that would be the case there. But uh, chance for Regis, potentially, if Duran can get an upset there to uh, win it out right next week against Osseo. 15 seconds remain. First and goal. Or pardon me, this is uh, second and two, rather. Erickson rolling right, and he has crushed! Oh, my goodness! What a hit put on him from behind. Did the ball come out? Everett Tate just lit up Erickson on the blind side. He had no idea it was coming. A whistle and a timeout, I think, has been taken by Nielsville Granton. There's some exception being taken to that hit right now, but, I mean, that's... It, it's not a... It, it looks pretty violent. Like, don't get me wrong, but it's a legal hit, right? I mean, there, there's nothing... There's nothing illegal about that hit from Everett Tate. He just didn't see it, and it, it looks way worse than it. I mean, I shouldn't say it looks way worse. I mean, it looks really bad, right? I mean, in terms of that hit, but he hit him square in the back. He put the shoulder, not the helmet, into him. I mean, that's as legal as you can do. It's football. That's a sport. I mean, they're arguing over on the far sideline. They want something called, but that's just uh, unfortunately for uh, 
the Warriors. That's football right there. And puts them back at the 11-yard line with four seconds remaining. They want one more chance to get in the end zone here. So, you know, you wonder maybe if Nielsville Granton took a little exception to that last touchdown that uh, Meyer ran in instead of Regis just taking a knee. I wonder if that's part of the issue here. So they want to put some score. And they're having a conversation with Pat Hammond about, I, I, what do you say if you're Pat Hammond? It's a legal hit. You, there's nothing There's nothing that you can flag for that. As Erickson back in the shotgun. Three receivers left, one right. Wants to go left. He'll go out that way. They got some blockers. Make a move at the five and in for the score. But zero's on the board. As in goes Gavin Barth for the touchdown. So... 43-26, that's your final score here from Carson Park. I don't believe they need to tech, uh, kick the extra point here with zeros on the board, or will they? A little bit of talking back and forth, I think, after that last hit. And Nielsville Granton certainly uh, excited that they got into the end zone, but it's going to be too little too late, obviously. And I think we're getting an extra point anyway, even though they don't necessarily need to kick this here. So this is just for uh, for stats and so on. After this uh, extra point, game is over. So 43-26 or 43-27. That's the only question at the moment. What matters is that Eau Claire Regis has moved to 6-2 and two on the season, 5-1 and one in conference. And now it is just Eau Claire Regis and potentially Mondovi, if they can win tomorrow against Iran, who will be top of the clover belt going into the last week. Extra point is up, and it is good, and the ball game is over. So 43-27, your final score here from Eau Claire Regis tonight. A homecoming win for the Ramblers. They get it done here on the Ramblers Sports Network tonight. Again, the uh, men to uh, highlight, Ian Andrews with two touchdown runs here tonight for the Ramblers. Albie had a touchdown run as well. We also saw Everett Tate get in for two scores, two rushing touchdowns, a four-yard and a 17-yard touchdown run, as well as a late touchdown from Boyer as well. So that is the uh, final score, 43-27. The Ramblers back in action next Thursday night, 7 o'clock. We'll be on the air here on both YouTube and Facebook about 15 minutes before uh, first kick for the final game of the regular season against Osseo Fairchild. Regis trying to lock in a home game in the playoffs, at least one for sure, with a win next week been a lot of fun. A special thanks to Zane Cullinan and his great video crew for uh, bringing you the game tonight. For everybody here on Pete Knutson, your final score from Carson Park, it's Eau Claire Regis 43 and Nielsville Granton 27. Chris Connor, I'm rounding third and coming for home.